1-855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we will have waiting for you there. A lot of those talk show hosts charge you for their websites. Ours is free. So enjoy freetalklive.com with you here tonight. You've got Ian. And Johnny Ray. So to start things out here, uh, special guest Jim Babb is with us here. He is a super activist in the Philadelphia area. And we've had Jim on the show a number of times uh, for various different reasons. In this particular case, a lot of your activism does sort of focus around uh, courthouses, it seems, Jim. And uh, you do some some good work out there. Uh, recently, there was an issue with some court security trying to give you a hard time and you standing up for yourself and backing them down, which was pretty cool. Uh, but you've got something that's, I think, a lot bigger, uh, a big project that uh, is on your hands at the moment that is really, really important. What is happening well, uh, thank you for having me. It's always great to be here, Ian. Sure. Uh, we're talking about a, a nationwide billboard campaign to promote jury nullification. And this campaign started last year in D.C., and this will be the third city now in New York City. And it's going to begin on December 29th, and we're starting out with six kiosk ads, which are on the side of phone booths uh, for pedestrian viewing surrounding the U.S. courthouse at 500 Pearl Street. So the goal is to inform as many people as we can about the right of a juror to judge the law itself, not just the facts of a case. You've uh, done these advertising, as you mentioned before. Previously in D.C., it seemed to surround the Adam Kokesh trial where he was facing time in prison for uh, racking a shotgun uh, in allegedly in some part of Washington, D.C. Didn't something happen during that trial where the judge tried to exclude people who had seen an advertisement about jury nullification, or am I just totally misremembering something? Well, uh, in Kokesh's case, he eventually took a plea deal and did not go to trial, but it, it certainly looked like he was going to for a long time. There were other trials in D.C. where that came up, and it was mm -hmm. quoted in the Washington Post that a reporter heard prosecutors complaining to the judge and begging the judge to try to exclude jurors that had seen the billboards. So the fact that these prosecutors and judges get a little bit grumpy uh, really sort of confirms to me that this is this is good work, and I think yeah. this is a, a real vital activity. Jim, uh, Johnny Ray here. How do you keep the message of jury nullification small enough to put on the uh, a, a kiosk or a billboard? Well, the, the photos are actually, uh, I have some photos of what these signs look like. They're actually pretty big. Um, it's, there's plenty of room to work with and got a couple bold headlines. The bold headlines are basically jury duty, know your rights, and Google jury nullification. And then for people that that gets their attention, there's a few more bullet points and a website and things like that that they can read more about. But I really just want to get people's attention and then get them to research it for themselves. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. Now, what website are you pointing them towards? Okay, the website is jrp.io slash nyc. So that's Jury Rights Project, jrp.io slash nyc. And that'll take you right to the Indiegogo fundraising page we have set up. And I'm really excited to report that that campaign has basically been active for about a day. Mm -hmm. And between that site... Uh, incoming Bitcoin transactions and some I had raised previously were about two thirds of the way towards wow. paying for the first month of these ads. And I'm really excited about that. So just to be clear, you're talking about buying multiple advertising locations, large format ads, like, you know, like a like a full size movie poster or even larger. Right. These are these are noticeable. I mean, they're attractive. Yeah. They're well designed. They look good. Well, uh, you be the judge of that. I designed them, so I think they do. But uh, I, I think they are going to get a lot of attention. I really do. And if, if you go to that website, you can see I have a mock-up of what one might look like on one of these signs. And I have a map that shows the locations surrounding the courthouse that people can check out. Yeah, so you're going to have multiple locations all around the district court uh, the federal district court there in New York City, which is the location where Ross Ulbricht's trial is going to be taking place. I believe that starts in early January. I think I've heard the 5th 
as uh, as the start date. So as potential jurors are coming in there and being selected for the trial, which presumably hasn't occurred yet, maybe it has. But either way, even if they haven't, even if they've already been selected, they've got to walk into that courthouse, and there's a good chance that this trial is going to go on for more than a day. So they're likely going to be walking by it multiple times meaning they're more likely to encounter this message. Now, I think this is a great idea. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad that you called in because I spotted this over the weekend and I thought, oh, that's cool. I hope that we, you know, talked to Jim about that. And then, of course, you know, got misplaced and it didn't come to my forefront until you said, hey, can I call in about this tonight? And yes, please. So jrp.io slash NYC. If it's hard to remember that, just go to Free Talk Live's uh, social media, our Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. I just linked over to... Uh, the fundraising information there. It's also the top story right now as voted by our listeners over at freetalklive.com. So it's in the moment, it's fairly easy to find this. But if you're listening later on, maybe a few days later, jrp.io slash NYC. And the JRP stands for Jury Rights Project. Correct. So uh, you're you're getting there. It looks like this could become a reality with uh, a few more contributions. I am I'm pretty excited about it. Now, as my understanding, there are going to be activists down there in uh, physical reality as well, like handing things to people. Is that yes. is there a plan for that too? Yeah, this is uh, in fact that's a really exciting part of this campaign. It's not just the billboards. It's the fact that we're going to have volunteers on street corners surrounding the courthouse with. Uh, a matching pamphlet. So the message will kind of go together, but the pamphlet will have m- much more detailed information available. So we're hoping to get that multiple exposure that I think is really going to get through to people. Is this the same courthouse, uh, Jim Bab, that Julian Heiklin, who was a longtime jury rights advocate, is this the same courthouse at which he was arrested a couple years ago? Oh, yes, it is. Um, And they were particularly cruel to him. I mean, they hurt him physically, Professor Heiklin there, and arrested him multiple times. One, At least on one occasion, he went to jail. Uh, At one point, they sent him to Rikers Island for two weeks. Wow. Okay. Um, And, you know, that really – and one of the times he was arrested, I was there with him, and I've never forgotten that. And that place, that courthouse is like 80 stories tall. Okay, this (sighs) is – this is, I mean, this is wholesale destruction of human life going on. So I'm really looking forward to making an impact down there. These people have been unchecked for so long that I, I really think we can make a difference there. Well, we know that the uh, prosecutors are really concerned about this. I'm sure, as you've heard, one of the more recent developments in the case has been that the prosecution in the Ross Ulbricht case, for our listeners that don't know, Ross is the guy who's accused of running the Silk Road, which is an underground drug marketplace since it's been shut down. The first iteration was. But anyway, uh, the prosecutors filed a motion asking the judge to prohibit Ross and his attorneys from discussing Ross's political viewpoint, which is, of course, libertarianism. And uh, they are very worried. They specifically say in the motion uh, that I was forwarded by his mother, and I've read through it, they specifically say that if Ross is able to talk about his political beliefs and his motivations for allegedly running the website, that that may sway the jury into jury nullification, and the prosecution would like the judge to prevent that from even coming up. Well, it makes perfect sense. Uh, One informed juror with a conscience scares the hell out of them because they can't control that. They control everything else. Everything is is dictated and manipulated and controlled. Uh, the last thing they want is a jury to find out that that a, perhaps the defendant is a, actually a good person. Mm-hmm. They don't want they don't want to discuss the sentencing. Oh well, we can't talk about the fact that we may be sending a good person to jail for life right. for for running an honest website, for instance, or for smoking a joint or something like that. The they, they, they really need the jury to be in the dark so they can just do their part to rubber stamp what the prosec- prosecution wants. So again, that confirms to me that this work is vital. Jim, can you hang on and talk a little bit further about this outreach and where it's going and maybe some ideas for folks who might want to come out and show up in person? Absolutely. All right, hang on. More with Jim Babb, and you can go and contribute to this fundraiser, JRP, Jury Rights Project, jrp.io slash NYC, or just go to the Free Talk Live Facebook page or Google Plus Twitter. Uh, We've got the link right there, and it also happens to be voted up on the top right now over at freetalklive.com. We'll continue with more jury notification info here on Free Talk Live. 
And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. The Declaration of Independence famously states that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what do we mean by the pursuit of happiness? Does it mean our happiness may come at the expense of other people? No, because that would deprive others of their rights. And the principle of equal rights rests at the heart of the Declaration. And our founders knew that a large federal government could threaten the pursuit of happiness. Simply put, the pursuit of happiness means liberty, the right to pursue our occupations, our hobbies, our loves, our interests, to do what we think best for our own lives, while respecting the free choices of others, even if we disagree with the choices they make. And that is the liberty protected for us all by the U.S. Constitution. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. For me, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fighting negativity, and the negativity is my thoughts in my head that are negative. And I had to re learn to recognize when my thoughts were being negative, because most of my life, my, most of my thoughts were negative. Mm -hmm. So I had, to, I had to become aware of when they were happening. And when I, and when now, when I become aware of, of these negative thoughts of pervading my, 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 my thinking, um, I, I immediately fight them with positive thoughts. And most of the positive thoughts that I feed myself are positive reaffirmations about who I am, where I'm going, where I've come from. Uh, whenever I find myself thinking negatively, I, I don't consider it fighting the negative thoughts. I just consider it changing my train of thought. I just kind of change tracks to a positive thought and just focus on that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It is uh, yet another Christmas Eve Eve edition of the show. Uh, the 23rd as we are doing this program and we're going to continue to be live throughout the holidays so christmas eve christmas day new year's eve free talk live will be here and johnny ray in here with me ian tonight johnny thanks for coming in oh you're welcome we're talking about jury merry Null christmas indeed and uh and a happy holidays we're talking about jury nullification because even though many people are right now enjoying the holidays and time with family and friends and by all means you certainly should enjoy the good things in life 
It's important to remember that at this time, as during every day of the year, there are peaceful people who are currently rotting away in prison cells. In this case, uh, it's Ross Ulbricht, a man who is alleged to be the man who's run the Silk Road, the creator of the Silk Road 1.0, the original Silk Road website, which was infamous uh, worldwide for being a destination and sort of this underground black market destination where you can buy all kinds of things from fake IDs to drugs. They took him down uh, a couple, uh, actually just over a year ago now at this point, and he has been sitting in a federal prison cell away waiting trial the system has just basically been screwing his defense team left and right as much as they possibly can before the trial has even started now his prosecutor has uh, motioned the court the court has yet to rule on this but so far his mother lynn who we've had on this show she says that the court has granted every single ridiculous motion that has been filed thus far by the prosecution to restrict the defense in what they can say. The most recent filing, which again has yet to be ruled on, is that they don't want Ross and his attorneys to be able to talk about his political beliefs, his ideas in, you know, in favor of the ideas of liberty. That's what he believes in, and that's what Dread Pirate Roberts, who he's accused of being, also believed in. Whether they are the uh, the two men are one and the same, uh, we've yet to really find that out. But uh, they're saying he's not going to be allowed, or they they want him to not be able to talk about his ideas and his beliefs and who he is, because they don't want the jury to have a chance of coming to the idea of jury nullification. So Jim Babb is on the line with us here, and he's engaged with another group of activists in the area in doing a fundraiser that will help get jury nullification advertising in various different locations physically surrounding the courthouse to where essentially someone who is walking from the subway or you know getting out of a taxi or however it is they're getting there in New York City to the federal district court, that they're going to see this advertisement talking about extolling the virtues of jury nullification and jim is uh, still with us here uh jim thanks for sticking with us my pleasure so uh what was it that motivated you why why this case i mean there certainly are a lot of uh, p- potential cases where people are being uh, frustrated and attacked by the system why ross Ulbricht? well this effort is not connected directly to any particular case or defendant uh, it's uh, it, it it happens to coincide with with a high profile case in New York uh, that you know that's fantastic and it's going to help bring it bring awareness to the concept of jury nullification. I want to help thousands of people that are getting their lives destroyed in that courthouse. I mean mm. this is this is a huge huge location, and if I'm successful. Um, and the people that are contributing to this effort are successful. What we want to do um, is try to recreate some of the success we had in D.C where complaints from prosecutors generated a media avalanche. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys got all kinds of free media. So the advertising is actually surprisingly affordable. I would have expected multiple locations for a month in New York City to run a lot higher than the amount you're trying to raise, which is, what, just over $3,000? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think the total bill is going to be about 3800 uh, just for the billboards, um, some more additional money for pamphleting and those kind of things. So just um, just that alone doesn't seem unreasonable to me as far as you know that amount of money for New York City, the amount of foot traffic you're going to get by these locations is probably pretty tremendous. But you add to that the fact that in D.C. it generated extra mainstream media coverage for the idea of jury nullification, and that's worth a whole lot more. Oh, certainly. I mean, the, the D.C. campaign... Uh, not it wasn't just the Washington Post and the local Fox affiliate, but once they reported on it, NPR did a nationwide radio story on jury nullification, mm. and I didn't even have to be interviewed. They brought in law professors from from Georgetown. <laughs> so, wow, that's great! It was it was really it, it was really great exposure. Um, so this so, is a good point. So not only are these signs, and you're looking at doing a, at least a month of time, maybe more, uh, but not not only the signage going to be seen by people that are on juries for more than just the Ross Ulbricht case, they'll be seen by thousands of members of the public as well. Maybe this will uh, parlay yet again into more mainstream media coverage of the idea of jury nullification. And of course, there will already be media crawling around due to the Ulbricht case. So there's certainly a good chance that you will be uh, getting some extra value for what the already, I think, decent price point on this is. Folks who want to go and help out, jrp.io, stands for Jury Rights Project, jrp.io slash 
NYC. We'll take you right to the fundraiser or just go to freetalklive.com if you're listening live tonight. It's there at the top story as voted by our listeners and also on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Also, I just posted to our social media the link to the Bitcoin address. If you go to the, the website that we've been promoting here, that's an Indiegogo thing. They don't let you do Bitcoin uh, on their page. So you've given me directly the address that uh, that folks who have Bitcoin that would like to contribute can contribute to. So uh, that's an option, and that's on our Facebook as well right now. I'm excited about this, Jim. Thanks for putting the effort in and, and making this happen. Obviously, you've, you've done this a couple times before. It was D.C., and what other? What was the other city? Uh, Phoenix was the last one that we completed. So How, How'd that one and, go? Did you manage to score any media down there? Um, it, was, it did really well in alternative media mm -hmm. and generated a lot of attention, but we did not get the, the old... Uh, the old media that I was hoping for. Well, anything you can get out of it, I think, is uh, is a, is a bonus. But I'm I'm pretty pretty jazzed about it. Thank you again for being on. Was there anything that, uh, that we didn't cover that you felt was important to get out about this? Uh, no, uh, you know, thank you for covering it. Um, just want to maybe throw a shout out to uh, to George Donnelly who built the Indiegogo page and really got it going on Reddit. Um, I had started the fundraising and and was struggling a little bit, but with his help, we've really ramped it up, and the funding is basically uh, going to be covered, and we're, we're probably going to get a couple months out of this if if, it, if this pace keeps up. So really excited about the success we're having. Yeah, and also that you're going out there to physically hand things out in reality. I know you're going to be prepared, but for anybody else that's planning on going out, please bring a video camera or two with you to make sure that everyone is as safe as possible. We know these bureaucrats at this courthouse, this federal courthouse in Manhattan. We know they are dangerous. Uh, they are willing to arrest a uh, an old, brittle man. Uh, they've done that multiple times in a violent manner, and so they certainly will pick on younger people. Uh, I can't stress having a video camera more than that. I have one more question. Yeah, please. Uh, Jim, I'm very skeptical of good, of positive change for the wider liberty movement occurring at all inside government buildings like courthouses. Uh, but I think that what you're doing is, I still think it's great. Are you appealing to the bureaucrats or are you appealing to the common man and are is this are are we just minimizing the harm that happens here, or do you think that that you can you can create freedom for the people inside a courthouse? Well, the message is directly towards the common person, uh, anybody who can can get jury duty at any time. And if what I want people to know is, yeah, you get a you might get a notice, uh, you might get a summons for jury duty. The natural instinct is to go, oh no, I have to get out of it. But once people realize they have an opportunity to, to, to put a wrench in this horrible machine they call the justice system. Hold uh, that thought, a Jim. We'll let you finish it up uh, in a moment. It's Free Talk Live. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. 
Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more on your federal or state income taxes, I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. The IRS, with their Fresh Start initiative, is offering more flexible terms to Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. They can help you lift your wage garnishments, stop bank levies, and put your tax problem behind you once and for all. If you owe tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to the IRS or state, our team team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, we can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your debt for far less than what you owe. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. 800-978-3909. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you would like here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We're starting out with jury nullification. It's a particularly important outreach project. I, I think it's important in general. That's why I go out every month here and... Keene, New Hampshire, whenever they have jury nul- or whenever they have jury selection dates and hand out jury nullification information at that time. Uh, what they're going to be doing in New York City is a much larger scale. They're going to be purchasing advertisements all around the federal district courthouse there, and you can help with it. Uh, the way you can help with that fundraiser is you go to Free Talk Live's Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access any of those through news.freetalklive.com, and you'll find the link to both the Indiegogo fundraiser and the Bitcoin wallet address that you'll need right there to donate to this effort. They're only looking to raise around $3,800, uh, and they're about two-thirds of the way to that goal. So very exciting. And by the way, when you look at the Indiegogo, it only shows you the dollars they've raised. That will not show you the amount of Bitcoin that they've also raised. So combining the two, they're about two-thirds of the way. You can help them get all the way. Again, go to news.freetalklive.com to link into our Google, our Facebook, and Twitter. At coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of some of the best of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. BuzzBox is great coffee. And it is priced competitively with other excellent high-end coffees. The thing that's different about BuzzBox is that when you buy through coffee.freetalklive.com, every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that's doing that funds one new microloan per month being loaned out to folks all around the world to help them make their lives better uh, by giving them the opportunity to have a hand up rather than a hand out. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com and you can get some great coffee. You pay the shipping cost on that free pound and you can cancel your subscription at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. As we go back to Jim Babb, Jim, you were answering kind of a big question from Johnny Ray there and I wanted to make sure you had a chance to get it out. Could you just quick recap uh, what you were saying before the break? Sure, it was a good question. Um, you know, who's this message for? Uh, the message is for anybody that could end up with jury duty, uh, and that could be anybody. So instead of getting out of jury duty, I'm hoping that people decide that if they can to take jury duty, go in there and be that last line of defense. Be the one that says, you know what, 
that guy smoked a joint. So what? I'm going to say not guilty. So he goes home to his family instead of to a cage. I don't care what the law says. I don't care what, you know, what the facts of the case are. You shouldn't go to jail for smoking a joint or for drinking raw milk or for watering your lawn or for, for any of the other million things you can do to get you into trouble with the law. Um, now, will this have some, you know, bigger effect on society? I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to guess at that. Oh, do we lose you, Jim? Um, and well, anyway, what he was saying there, he'll probably come back to us here when he gets a chance. There is a connection error there with, uh, with Skype, but yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of jury outreach as well, and it's hard to say when you really know, it's hard to know when you've had an impact because unless a juror specifically comes to you after the trial and says, Hey, thanks for giving me that information. I used it. Then you probably aren't going to really know for sure. If you've had an effect, there are a couple of times where we have seen, uh, this, this outreach, whether it be billboards or physically handing information to people or the attorneys or defendants actually giving the information of jury nullification at trial, which we've actually been able to see happen here in New Hampshire and other places you can't mention jury nullification during the course of a trial because they'll call a mistrial or possibly hit you with contempt of court. Uh, but in New Hampshire, it has been possible for people to do that. And we have seen that uh, in the case of Adamo and Pete in Greenfield, Massachusetts, where one of the jury uh, members there was inspired enough to actually nullify that it worked, that he managed to flip the entire jury and find those guys not guilty. So we've seen it work there. And we also saw it work in the case of Doug Darrell, who was a Rastafarian guy growing pot here in New Hampshire. He ended up with a Free State Project participant on his jury. And she, who is in her 60s, she kind of looks like a lady you would expect to see on a jury, uh, she managed to flip that entire jury to not guilty as well. So John Anyway, there's no doubt that this uh, getting this information into people's hands, it can work. It doesn't always work. It doesn't work as often as we might like it to, because even with the knowledge about jury nullification, you still have to count on the person to have the courage to enact that knowledge. And uh, that's the really the tricky part that all we can really do is encourage. Right, Jim? And you are back with us. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can uh, encourage people. And let's face it, another like 95 or 99 percent aren't even getting a trial. They're going to jail after a plea deal. So yeah. we're really trying to help a very small segment of the population, but the potential to have a huge impact. If I mean, if I can send one person home to their family instead of to a cage, to me, that's worth all of the effort. I can only imagine the the evil that goes on in this. Oh, all right. So there's Jenny Ray. Pardon me. Oh, damn it. <laughs> the evil, the evil that goes on in this 80 story building. But it eh, but it does. It feels it feels good to go in and uh, and hold your head up high and do what, you know, the right thing is, uh, even when it's very difficult when you're going through security checkpoints and when you're you've you've got bailiffs and judges staring you down to tell them, for example, no, I I cannot pay the fine. Uh, I, I would prefer to do community service. No, I can't do community service. Well, my conscience forbids me from giving you money, so um, I, I guess I'll have to go to jail for a few days or something. Sometimes it seems futile, but uh, but it feels right. Definitely. So uh, one more time, Jim, folks can get behind this effort in a couple different ways. Uh, Bitcoin is accepted. Uh, dollars are accepted through the Indiegogo fundraiser, which is all linked to on the Free Talk Live Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Folks can also visit the Indiegogo fundraiser directly by going to jrp.io slash NYC. JRP stands for Jury Rights Project. Now, if you just go to jrp.io, there's some sort of like jury rights quiz that comes up. What is that? Well, this is a, a project that George and I are working on, the Jury Rights Project. Um, it's it's really in its infancy right now. It's not exactly ready for prime time, okay. but uh, the idea is to is to make even more resources available and to expand this this type of educational outreach into all corners. Hmm. I guess it's not a quiz; it's a course. The Jury Rights 101 course. Well, you know, if, it, if it's not ready for prime time, don't advertise a URL on uh, on national radio. <laughs> so, what happens if somebody pu puts in their first, last name, and email address in the in those boxes there? Uh, I'm sure that you know that part's working. I, I sh okay, let me take good. it back. It is ready for prime. Time. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, now are you trying to uh, compete with the Fully Informed Jury Association or, you know, ex sort of expand on something they're not doing, do something a little differently? What's the vision that's going to, I guess, differentiate jury rights or the jury rights project? 
Well, I, I just think this this topic is so big that we need many, many organizations. I mean, like in New Hampshire, you guys have the, the New Hampshire uh, juror operation up there, which That's I right. think is, is fantastic. Um, I think we, we need to have 100, 100 organizations working on this mm. on a nationwide basis, on a local basis. And, and I love the Fully Informed Jury Association and what they do. And, and Kirsten has been extremely supportive of – uh, of my projects. And, good, 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 good to know. Uh, so, you know, I, I just think that we can, we, there's room for, for everybody in this and we need a diverse marketplace where people are free to try different approaches. Jim, will you be, uh, will you be there during the Ross Ulbricht uh, jury or the, the first day of the trial or will you be there throughout the trial, uh, you know, doing outreach? Uh, it is my intention to at least be there for the beginning. Okay. If it's possible, if you have time, I know you're you probably loaded up with stuff to do, but if you have time, could you call us up and kind of give us a, a rundown of you know what your experience was, whether it was doing the outreach, if there was any hassles from the uh, court security, etc.? Would be. I'm presuming you said that would be okay. You cut out there as you uh, answered the question. <laughs> Yes, it would be great. Okay, uh, great. Jim Babb, yes. thanks for coming on the show tonight. I appreciate the extended time as well for the extra questions, and uh, and good luck with the fundraiser. Hopefully, I'm, I expect it's going to uh, to meet its goal since you do have a few days yet uh, to to wrap it up. So thanks again. Thank you. Jim Babb from the Juror or Jury Rights Project, their website, jrp.io. You put a slash NYC after that. And that'll take you directly to the Indiegogo fundraiser where you can help throw in to get these advertisements placed all around the courthouse in New York City, which is, of course, the very same courthouse in which Ross Ulbricht will be facing the rest of his life in prison for ostensibly running the Silk Road. We'll keep you in the loop as we know more about that case. You're welcome to share your thoughts here with us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come, Johnny Ray's got a, uh, we got the game of the week on the way, plus cutting the cord. We'll tell you about it. It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end-of-year deals in over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website FPP.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free and bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. We are live, and with you tonight, it's Ian. And the wise janitor, Jenny Ray. Indeed, and you may, of course, take control here and on Skype. You can join us just as Jim did a few moments ago and sound great uh, on Skype compared to your regular phone over at Skype username lrn.fm. So we've been talking about In Freedom's Cause as a great gift for family members. It's probably too late to get it to you in time for Christmas, but the coupon code is still good. So it's uh, it's never too late to give this as a gift to the children in your life. In Freedom's Cause is one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history. It's the story of William Wallace. It's like Braveheart, only historically accurate. And it's audio theater. And that means that you get to imagine what was going on. You get sound effects and you get voice acting by name actors like Joanne Froggett Downton, uh, from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd, you may know him from Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes of Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo from Braveheart as well as Game of Thrones and Sons of Anarchy. Uh, you can hook up with this, and it's got a study guide as well. Uh, so go to infreedomscause.com and get the family four-pack for half price with code FTL. That's FTL, like Free Talk Live. That's your discount code over at infreedomscause.com. It's infreedomscause.com to your phone calls and thoughts here. And then coming up, of course, other things to discuss, including uh, Johnny Ray, since we're on the court discussion, you've got a story about a judge rebuking a jury for coming to the wrong decision. Getting it wrong. Well, what the judge thought was the wrong decision. Let's go to Larry listening in Hyde Park. Larry just dropped off the line. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Also, uh, in other news, there's the cord cutters, which is a term that is used for people who are leaving the world of cable television. And it's kind of been something that that I've done here on Free Talk Live. It's it's interesting to watch people's media habits change over the years as technology changes. Uh, what are, what are people doing differently these days? Well, a lot of people are leaving pay television behind. So we can talk about that here. And it turns out people are actually pretty satisfied with leaving pay television behind. And Johnny Ray, let's get into the story about the lady judge who apparently wasn't acting very ladylike at all, threatening and uh, intimidating jurors after the fact by telling them that they were wrong to give a return a not guilty verdict. Do you have that story? Yeah, I have a story from the Columbus Dispatch. That's Columbus, Ohio, from May of this year. Some jurors were upset when Franklin County Municipal Judge Amy Salerno berated them for reaching the, quote, wrong verdict in finding a man not guilty of assault last summer. The Ohio State Bar Association is upset as well. The Bar Association has filed a complaint with the Ohio Supreme Court's disciplinary board accusing Salerno of misconduct and requesting that she be punished for her comments to jurors. 
The bar's Legal Ethics and Professional Conduct Committee accuses Salerno of violating the Judicial Ethics Code by criticizing jurors, failing to promote confidence in the judiciary, and failing to avoid the, imp- the appearance of impropriety. Hmm. The bar received six complaints about the conduct of Salerno, who did not respond yesterday to messages, presumably, from the Columbus Dispatch, seeking comment. Following the hearings, the Board of Commissioners on Grievances and Discipline will determine what, if any, punishment to recommend to the there su- will be no Ohio Supreme Court. We've seen judges here in uh, New Hampshire act very, very poorly. And a few years ago, at least one activist did put in uh, some sort of a complaint to the Judicial Conduct Committee, which turns out the Judicial Conduct Committee is just made up of other judges. And so no one should be surprised when committees like that come back with responses, essentially, uh, you know, giving their their buddies a pass. That'd be my prediction in this case. Salerno, a former state lawmaker who has served as a judge since 2005 and won re-election last fall. Mm. Um, that so she's she's in for another six years as of last fall. All right, could face the suspension of her law license, which would remove her from the bench. The complaint against Salerno involves her handling of the July 29th through August 1st, 2013 trial of Joseph McGee on assault and disorderly conduct charges. Salerno admitted acting with surprise and telling jurors they returned the wrong verdict after their decision was announced to court. Wow. She also admitted telling jurors that prosecutors believed they had a, quote, slam dunk case (laughs) against McGee. The judge also told jurors that McGee had a pending case in which he was charged with aggravated menacing and witness intimidation for allegedly threatening to shoot witnesses in his she's trial. She's telling them this after they've made their decision. She's telling them, it's okay, I'm going to be seeing this man again, and I I will, I'll be able to put him behind bars. You reached the wrong verdict. And she came out and she said, she said 99% of the time, the jury gets it right. Mm. Congratulations, you just made it 98%. <laughs> really? Yes. Now, wait, she tells them this in open court or like back in the jury chambers or whatever? Uh, that is not clear in mm. Johnny Ray's mind. Either way, it's clear. What is clear that is this judge has stepped far beyond the standard operating procedures for a judge. The judge is supposed to appear at least to be uh you know of an independent mind from all of the goings on in court Mm -hmm. now obviously that's not the case because the judge receives a paycheck from the state which is the same organization giving the prosecutor a paycheck and in a lot of cases the defense attorney if it's a public defender they're also receiving a paycheck from the state so it's pretty clear to anybody that does even a little bit of digging that uh, or thinking about this that you know there's there's no real separation uh, between these people. It's all just an illusion. Uh, but, you know, she's supposed to at least try to maintain that illusion of being separated from taking one side or another uh, in the case. And, yeah, and that, she just and that's, doesn't care. Right. And and that's what the Bar Association would ultimately be punishing her for if they if they ever did, did punish her. Just for breaking the, the illusion? Yeah, the appearance of impropriety. So I think it's interesting that she's just so obviously siding with the prosecution here and and it's it's pretty crystal clear, you know, whose side she's on. I don't know what the facts are in the case. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't know if this, you know, what the situation is, but obviously the jurors felt this guy didn't deserve to be convicted for it. And for a jury to come back with a not guilty verdict is a pretty unprecedented thing at all to have Uh that happen so that would seem to me that the case was pretty lousy because considering that the uh you know jurors tend to go along with what prosecutors want they tend to convict overwhelmingly for them to not convict really says to me that the prosecution had a a slipshod case at best uh misdemeanor assault and disorderly conduct suggests there was a police officer was the subject of the assault and Why would that suggest that? Because if it were a cop, then wouldn't there be like a special you hit a cop charge, like assault on a police officer? I believe there's a special category for something like that. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess when I when I hear the words disorderly conduct, I just think catch all. So so there's a cop in in the scuffle. But that's not necessarily true at all. Yeah, well, disorderly conduct is a a fairly large kind of ranging statute that can cover a few different things so not necessarily johnny ray but nonetheless an interesting story about yet another uh 
person in the judicial system making it pretty crystal clear that the system is designed to convict people, that they, they expect you to convict people. And in this case, when this jury did not convict this man, she let it fly. Yeah, and she said she made a public apology, a really? quote a quote apology. I'm putting the scare quotes on apology. She said, I was very surprised and I failed to contain my surprise at the ah, verdict. Okay. And I apologize if I offended anyone. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if she's apologizing because she's an elected judge. Because I know that we've seen some pretty poor behavior from judges here in New Hampshire and they don't apologize uh, for it because they're lifetime appointments here. Mm -hmm. uh, judge can, you know, the judges get appointed, I think, by the governor and ultimately can stick on the bench as long as they darn well feel like it. Sure. Which is a problem. Um, there's, you know, New Hampshire's not a perfect place, but it is definitely probably the most free of all the 50 states. And that's why New Hampshire was chosen as the destination for the Free State Project, which, of course, if you care about liberty and you like the idea of jury nullification, get up here to New Hampshire because we've got an active group of jury nullification outreach activists. I'm one of them uh, that goes out on a regular basis and explains the ideas of jury nullification to folks, hands out information in front of uh, the courthouses in Manchester and Keene. I know uh, the Grafton County Courthouse also gets uh, outreach fairly often, but there's still a few counties that don't get it and several counties that so we can expand this and we need more activists here, plain and simple. But already, I would say we probably have one of the most robust jury rights outreach organizations in the country today, NHJury.com, which is only going to get better over the next few weeks. There's a board that has been formed for NHJury.com. We're looking to hire an executive uh, director for the organization. So the idea is to kind of take that to the next level. And I, I think that all the efforts to inform jurors of their rights, wherever they're happening, definitely deserve the support of people like you, dear listener. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, a captive orangutan has the human right to freedom, according to a court. We'll tell you where that's happening. 855 -450. 450 free, you take control, plus cutting the cord is on the way. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments and I'll send you something weird. Jack Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.60 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,176 per ounce. 
And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $335. Antiwar.com reports North Korean internet connections began experiencing trouble Friday and it got progressively worse over 24 hours until finally every single IP address in the nation went down, effectively cutting the nation's already limited addresses from the internet entirely. North Korea isn't talking, but experts say what happened is consistent with the distributed denial of service attack, except on a nationwide scale. That their internet began experiencing problems at the same time as the U.S. began threatening them is immediately suspect, and the White House is officially refusing to comment on the incident. If confirmed as a U.S. attack, it would be the first time the U.S. has knocked another nation entirely off the internet through hostile action, though given how small North Korea's internet presence is, it isn't a huge feat. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports, a U.S. district judge on Monday denied an injunction seeking to halt executions in Oklahoma filed by attorneys for death row inmates who argued a troubled lethal injection in the state in April exposed deep flaws in the death chamber protocols. U.S. District Judge Stephen Friot wrote that the lawyers failed to show inmates could suffer inhumane harm, adding in a court document posted online that entry of a preliminary injunction would not be in the public interest. The decision allows the state to proceed with four executions scheduled for next year. The flawed lethal injection of convicted murderer Clayton Lockett led to widespread criticism and caused the state to revamp its procedure. Oklahoma prison officials said their lethal injection mix is humane and appropriate. They told the court they had no intention of changing the combination. The judge ruled in Oklahoma City that the plaintiffs, 21 death row inmates, did not prove that the state's use of the drug Midazolam created an unacceptable risk of pain and suffering during execution. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports, according to a new Pew Research Center report, most experts think internet privacy is on the way out. The research center asked over 2,500 technology experts if politicians and technology innovators would create a trusted privacy rights infrastructure by 2025, what is most likely to happen by then, and the future of privacy in a broader sense. 55% of respondents said a trusted privacy rights infrastructure would not exist by 2025. Vitalis Boutrimas, the chief advisor to a major government ministry, said George Orwell may have been optimistic when imagining Big Brother. One anonymous responder wrote, Privacy will be the new taboo and will not be appreciated or understood by upcoming generations. Joe Cochin, the chief operating officer for U.S. Ignite, said, Public norms will continue to trend toward the desire for more privacy, while people's actions will tend toward giving up more and more control over their data. The report explains how people tend to want privacy, but they also want to share everything they're doing and thinking with their friends. The more people share, the more government and corporations can track and store the data to identify trends. Many experts noted the government is slow to build laws around technology, and the laws it creates often don't lean toward increased privacy. There is also the fact that technology moves very quickly. The report also explains that privacy and the defenses for privacy will continue to battle for the foreseeable future. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The manatee is a solitary creature, drifting along in the warm, peaceful shallows. They are not usually held in a small glass enclosure, with three other male manatees hell-bent on the violent, forced sex that I, for real, saw 
with my own eyes while alone one night at SeaWorld, San Diego. A distant relative of the elephant, the manatee has a prehensile upper lip which it uses to gather food. It also has a large penis. Classified as endangered, human boaters often cause serious wounds to manatee's flippers, rendering it difficult for this one poor little rescue manatee to escape a large male manatee intent on unwanted anal intercourse. One needed not to look in that little manatee victim's cold, soul-sapped eyes to know this was not the first time this had happened, nor would it be the last. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of these airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. And Johnny Ray. And you can join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm to send a contact request. And it will be approved after that. You can easily call us on Skype. You'll sound a lot better than normal uh, callers do. Toll-free number for regular phone calls is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, a captive orangutan has a human right to freedom, according to one court, which is different from what a different court had said just recently in the United States. We'll tell you where this court is located. Also, your calls and thoughts are welcome. Let's go to Dave in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Dave. Yeah, hi guys, how you doing? Dave, go ahead, sir. Um, do you remember how like a couple of weeks back ago or months back ago I told you about my rude, annoying neighbor who was always slamming his door? Vaguely. Okay, but we'll take your word for it. Go ahead. Okay, well, today I got into a confrontation with him. Now, is this guy above you or to the left or the right of you? He is uh, like right next door to me. And like, you know, today, because like he was like walking the hallway and, and like he walked in this room and I'm like, and I, I yelled out in the hallway, please stop spamming your door. And then he opened it, and me and him got into a confrontation. And he says, oh, it's because, you know, this guy has been in jail before. And uh, he, he goes, oh, I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up, you know. And, you know. I can't say the F word because of the FCC. I appreciate and that. Blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, uh, he, 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 he was saying to me, I'm going to take my medication. I'm going I'm to mess you up. I'm going to mess you up. And I, I kept telling him, I kept telling him politely. Please stop slamming your door. He goes, I'm, I'm going to mess you. I'm going to mess you up. I'm like, again, please stop slamming your door. So did you yell at him to stop slamming his door, or did you you know, quietly, in a normal tone of voice, request that he stop slamming his door? You said you yelled at him. A moment ago. Yeah, because he, he he walked right by me. Then he walked to his room, and then he like he like slammed the door behind him. I don't know if it's the door himself, or maybe he's Kurt, or he's intentionally doing it to mm -hmm. piss me off. You know, is I, this I, the I, first I, time you have uh, ever communicated to this man your feelings about his door slamming? Uh, no, I told him. I even told him once outside a few months back ago. I'm like, look, I'm your next door neighbor. Please stop slamming your door. And what did he tell you at that time? Uh, he, he goes, oh, I don't, don't want to hear it, blah, blah, blah. You know, he, he, he's a rude, annoying prick, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like, again, I wish I could swear, but I'm not because of the FCC, blah, blah, blah. Well, it sounds to me like, uh, you know, you're frustrated and that maybe apartment living isn't for you, Dave. I mean, when you're living in close proximity with, with people, they can... They can be kind of frustrating in, in some of their habits. I'm not saying he's right in what he's doing. Uh, he's obviously disturbing you and presumably disturbing others in his act of regular door slamming. Um, presumably, if others, if others are upset about this you and you can't come to an agreement with him just man to man, this, he doesn't sound like a very agreeable person. I don't think that you would be in the wrong to go to the apartment management and, you know, let them know that this is a problem. What what happened there? I I uh, I went to uh, the front desk. I, I left a complaint about, against this man. You know, he, he he's black. He said, oh, I've, I've been in jail before. You know, I'll, I'll mess you up. You know, again, I wish I could swear, but I can't. I, I don't think that the color of his skin really but, matters uh, and, or whether he was in jail. Also, well, what happened when you made the complaint to uh, <laughs> to the apartment? building uh I, I also i also sent an email to the housing authority and i haven't because i sent it like, like oh tonight. so you I'll do live in government housing no it's not called that you guys keep messing it up it's not called that wait a minute oh, wait a minute God, you just said you sent an email to the housing authority you've before denied on this radio program dave that you are a welfare recipient 
It sounds to no, me Corey like you're living is, in, in welfare Corey houses. Is, no, I'm not. Corey is the welfare. But anyway, besides Who's that. Who's Corey? Is I that your roommate? Email, no, Corey is the uh, leech out in Alaska. But let's, let's, let's get off that subject for a while. But I sent an email <laughs> well, I don't know what the, that uh, has to, to do with anything at all. Who, which housing authority did you send an email to? To my landlord. Well, your landlord is different. You said housing authority a moment ago. Now, you didn't I think that uh, that was you being honest with what what's actually going on here. What's the housing authority? What's the full name of it? Is it the Poughkeepsie I'm Housing gonna, Authority? I'm, I'm not going to mention it. I'm is, not going to mention, but is, anyway, I is it the Poughkeepsie? Well, landlord. if you can't have a conversation, Dave, we'll just have to let you go. Good luck with your uh, your issues with the neighbor. What I would suggest is that you get out of the the welfare housing and find yourself your own place, maybe your own house to where there's some distance in between you and the, the next door neighbors. And uh, well, thanks for the for call. And good luck. That's what I would do, because if you're taking a handout from somebody, and Dave swears up and down that he's not on welfare. If you're taking a handout from somebody, then beggars really shouldn't be choosers, in my opinion. If you're getting a free place to stay uh, or a su heavily subsidized place to stay, I don't think you have too much to com that to where you should be complaining about the behavior of the neighbors. Amen, Ian. Amen. I mean, I'm not being unreasonable tough. with that. No, it's it's it it is tough. Like you said, it's tough being in close quarters with people, but mm -hmm. when you're when it's when it's being given to you when you you can't really exercise any authority over your environment because you're not paying for it uh, you just got to grit your teeth and you got to bear it i mean i guess within the system there is some sort of grievance process as he said he filled out a complaint and certainly you know you're welcome to utilize the system and whatever rules they have but don't be surprised when somebody tries to turn that same system right back around on you so one of the things that happens when governments get in between neighbors is that people will tend to use the government rather than just talking with their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now, if what Dave says is true, and I don't know if what he says is true, but if what he says is true and he actually tried to have a conversation with this guy, then good for him. Then that's, you know, that's the way to to approach things. Of course, I'm presuming Dave was, you know, a kind person in the way he did that, which I don't know why I would presume that because all of the evidence shows that Dave doesn't get along with people very well, and he doesn't seem to put much effort into getting along with people. One of the first things for long time, long time listeners of the show know know this, but new listeners who may have heard Dave for the first time tonight, uh, Dave called a couple of years ago for the first time, and one of his first complaints. The reason he was calling for the first time was he was complaining about getting into fights online with people, like verbal kind of altercations, text altercations uh, with people. And he was complaining Flame about— Flame wars. Yeah, he was complaining about the, the people who were picking on him. But it turned out that when he showed up on the Free Talk Live forum, the, the BBS, that he was being very, very rude and abrasive to the people who were already in that forum— so it seemed pretty clear to me why Dave has problems with people, uh, you know, treating him poorly is because he doesn't treat them very well in the first place. So you kind of get what you put out there, Dave. You know, when you put out anger and you put out uh, being rude towards people, you shouldn't be surprised when you get it back tenfold in ways that you don't like. And don't be surprised when you go running to the housing authority and you put in a complaint against this guy for slamming his door, don't be surprised when he comes up with some reason to complain about you. Because that's not uncommon. Is where one And it's not just necessarily in, a, in an apartment building where this happens. It, it happens in, in neighborhoods as well, wherever the government is in charge. And I don't mean just all welfare housing. I mean just any old neighborhood where government has zoning rules or whatever. One neighbor points out that, uh, you know, neighbor X... They have a truck parked in their yard, and so neighbor X then finds something wrong with neighbor Y, who had complained on him, and he complains back about neighbor Y and how it is that his grass is too tall, or whatever the arbitrary rule violation happens to be. And before you know it, you've got this, this war going on between neighbors who are trying to sick the government on the person that they don't like. And ultimately, everybody loses in that conflict. Will Grigg was talking about this on his uh, his own podcast, Freedom Zealot Podcast. Mm -hmm. People, instead of fighting for their own freedom, for their r real freedom to do what they want to do as long as they're not punching somebody else in the face or picking somebody else's pocket, instead of fighting for their own real freedom, instead they'll, they'll just make it their goal in life to make sure that everybody else is equally as miserable and equally as unfree and chained down. And it's pathetic. 
it's it's pitiful, it's sad, it's uncivilized. So what do you do, though, when you've got neighbors who are doing things that are definitely, uh, you know, violative, that uh, let's say they're making loud noises in the middle of the night and you're trying to sleep, uh, whether it's slamming a door or it's running some sort of a saw across the street or, you know, mowing the lawn at six in the morning. I mean, it is, what do you do in that situation, Johnny Ray? Now, let me think about it, but uh, noise pollution, I, I don't necessarily believe in it, and I don't believe that I control the air. All right, let's talk about that coming up here in moments. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Do you have a conflict with a neighbor? Tell us about it. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
This is Free Talk Live, and with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Johnny Ray. Don't forget, you can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Got some conflict with the neighbors? You want to tell us about it? You're welcome to do that. Dave in New York called in to explain uh, that he's got a neighbor who's been slamming the door, and he's very frustrated by that, so he decided to get into an argument with the neighbor about it. Uh, Now, I don't know if that was what Dave's intention was, but in a lot of cases, he comes off as not... The nicest of characters, not someone with whom a neighbor would want to necessarily negotiate. And it may be the case that both of the neighbors are equally ornery uh, in this particular process. And you're welcome to share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. Also, if you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. What is it? It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your online data so your internet service provider will be in the dark about what you're doing on their internet connection. Right now, if you're not using ProXPN, your ISP is probably logging all the websites you visit, all the search terms you enter, maybe keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. You can stop that from happening. Just install ProXPN's free software. You can get it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices as well. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but it's actually pretty simple. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, download the software there, and then use promo code FTL50 when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. ProXPN is incredibly useful. You just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 to get that 50% off the price of the annual account. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. So that code again, FTL50, Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. So I'd asked you, Johnny Ray, what do you do in this situation with uh, not necessarily Dave's situation, but just like a legitimate situation where you've got one neighbor and they're being pretty noisy. Like, you know, it's disturbing you. uh, You're trying to go to sleep and they're running some kind of saw uh, across the street and it's uh, it's it's bothering you. What do you do in a situation like that, Johnny Ray? At number one, you politely approach the person and tell them you're creating a lot of noise and will you please not create as much noise? And then if they don't, you talk it over with your neighbors. Beyond that, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, In our society of today, the police are like our babysitters. Mm Mm-hmm. So that uh, people, many would would advise the next step is to call the police, but you never want to call the police because the police don't have your don't the the police are not interested in your well being and they're not going to help you. There's no situation that's so bad it can't be made worse by, by the police calling the police. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. I think that uh, communicating with your neighbors about any issues you have is the best way to do it. I've had a couple of neighbors tell me, uh, you know, a couple things about the the property, and I've done my best to remedy the situation in in most of those instances. And I think most neighbors, being the neighborly sort, would be willing to help help out. And, of course, uh, it doesn't always work out that way. And if it doesn't, then I also agree with you, Johnny Ray, that calling the police is not going to make things better. If anything, that'll escalate the conflict that may make the neighbor uh, resent you even further. The police may do who knows what, and they may end up arresting you for some nonsense. So you never know. You never know what the cops are going to do when they come in. It's like you know when you pull the fire extinguisher, you don't know what the firemen are going to do when they show up to supposedly save your house. They may end up destroying part of it in order to save it. So who knows? Um, the police are a dangerous group of people, and I also agree to not bring them in. And I think that if you want to prevent yourself from having noise or neighbors that create some sort of a non-noise-related annoyance, whatever that might be, maybe you don't like their Christmas lights. I mean, there's grumpy people everywhere. Personally, I don't really care what my neighbors do. Uh, If I cared about what my neighbors do, then I would live in a deed-restricted neighborhood where there's all kinds of stupid rules for for the neighbors to follow and for you to follow as well. Um, I've never lived in one of those neighborhoods as uh, as an adult, and I have no interest in living in them because I've known people who've lived in these places, and the rules are insane. Um, and even if there were a few rules in the beginning, it seems to me that they're likely to expand into more than a few rules over time, simply because an organization that controls things like deed restrictions would seem to attract 
the people who are looking to be, let's call them neighborhood Nazis, the people who uh, they have a vision for what the neighborhood should look like, and they're going to try to take control of the neighborhood association to where they can then implement their vision uh, to you know whatever cost it might might cost to implement and whatever inconvenience. So I'm not interested in in all of that. But for those people who are, then please move out of wherever it is you live. If if someone's bothering you, if your neighbors are upsetting you, first of all, try some earmuffs or like some earplugs or something. See if that solves the problem. Secondly, just leave and go to some place where there are very specific restrictions on things. I mean, I remember one neighborhood, you couldn't even park a truck outside of your house at night. You could park another vehicle, a regular car, but if but you not park a truck, a truck you couldn't do that. Um, and you know you couldn't have a work truck outside of your your house at any time. You know what, unless the person was you know some plumber was actually inside doing something. And this is the kind of neighborhood where there's all kinds of dumb rules like that. Please move into that neighborhood because then, if you're in a private uh, agreement with other people, then if you've got an actual violation of an agreement, like oh well, when you came to this neighborhood, you signed this agreement, and it said that you would not make more than sixty decibels of noise as measured by the next door neighbor's drive front of his driveway. And if you're in an agreement like that, then then you've got a totally legitimate claim against your neighbor for having a party out in the back that was too loud or whatever. And if that's the life you want to live, where you're constantly getting into little tiffs with uh, with neighbors, then you know you can live that life. But presumably, the people in those uppity neighborhoods would likely not cause those problems in the first place because they're all just as uppity. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. So I'm kind of like you on this one, Johnny Ray. I really just you know it doesn't bother me what the what the neighbors do. And when neighbors are noisy, it's just, hey, it's the cost of living in freedom or like relative freedom to me. It sounds like freedom coming into my window. Uh huh. And, uh, Ian, one of the things that I, has always appealed to me about libertarianism and free association is that I think a voluntary society would. <laughs> serious punishment. And I and I'm not I don't can't think of any examples right now, but serious consequences and serious punishment to offensive people is possible in a voluntarist society. And I think in the society, uh, the distinctly involuntary, unfree society we live in now, troublemakers are they get away with it all the time because of the legal system. The legal system so often rewards the evildoer and mm-hmm. punishes the virtuous. No and, good deed goes unpunished. Right. On, on Free Talk Live, we talk a lot about police abuse and so forth. But one, but one of the things that I think is a real shortcoming of the state is it's impossible to really give people what they deserve. I think that a voluntary society could exclude and shun someone, mm-hmm. but, um, which would be, which would be effective because if you can't eat, then you can't. You can't you can't stay there. You got to move on. Toll free number tonight eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Will we be joined by orangutans in that voluntary society, Johnny Ray? Right now, there's a court decision that's come down that says one captive orangutan has a human right to freedom. We'll uh, give you more details on that. You can share your thoughts as well. If you've got a neighborly conflict, dial us up. Free talk live. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. With weather conditions in the Sahara among the most brutal in the world, the desert is a place suitable only for collapsing, dying, and rotting. 
Starvation is just one of the many possible outcomes for the gazelle or desert elk. It could also suffocate in a sandstorm, collapse of dehydration, or be run over by a dune buggy. Only the vulture has the wherewithal to survive in this nirvana of death. They feed on the dead of the Sahara. Uniquely adapted to the rigors of desert life, the vulture usually dies of heart disease after becoming overweight from the feast of carcasses. The landscape of the desert is dominated by towering sand dunes made from millions of years of ground-up bones. Another day ends in the Sahara, Earth's largest, most uncomfortable tomb. This is the Onion News Network. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial us up toll free here. Bring up whatever's on your mind, whether it's conflicts between the neighbors, jury nullification. That's a couple of things we've discussed thus far this evening. Coming up, the captive orangutan has been ruled to have a human right to freedom, according to a court in Argentina. We'll uh, give you more details on that. Your calls and thoughts are welcome here. 855 free and Skype username lrn.fm. Mark, who is uh, normally with us here on Tuesday nights, he's on a uh, much-deserved vacation down to Florida. He's going to be going to Anarchapulco at the end of February. He'll be attending with Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante as well as Angel Clark, who has just recently moved to Acapulco, Mexico. Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, will be attending. Cody, Real, uh, Cody Wilson, Nima Badati, Objectivist Girl Luke Radowski, Dana Martin, Ernie Hancock, and more. What more reason do you need to go to Acapulco in February? It's going to be a great event. Hotel prices are reasonable. Tickets for the event itself, less than $100 if you get registered by Christmas which means your time for the early bird prices is running out. Workshops are running all week, and the action really heats up on the weekend. It's happening February 27th through March 1st in Acapulco. Mark's going to be attending the unschooling workshop and will be there throughout the weekend. You can go down there and uh, take a look and see if Acapulco is indeed the new Liberty destination. Go check out anarchapulco.com to get your tickets. That's anarchapulco.com. Our toll-free number tonight is 855 855- 450 free. Let's go to Andrew in St. George, Utah. You're on Free Talk Live. Andrew. All right. The uh, Yeah, so in what 
I think you said orangutans in Argentina, or they, they want to protect the uh, the liberty of orangutans. Is that what you said? Uh, if you'd like, I can give you a little detail from the story, and you're welcome to comment. So, oh, sure. So here you go. From Reuters in Buenos Aires, an orangutan held at an Argentine zoo can be freed and transferred to a sanctuary after a court recognized the ape as a, quote, non-human person, unquote, law- unlawfully deprived of its freedom, say local media. Animal rights campaigners filed a habeas corpus petition, a document more typically used to challenge the legality of a person's detention or imprisonment. In November, on behalf of Sandra, a 29-year-old Sumatran orangutan at the Buenos Aires Zoo, in a landmark ruling that could pave the way for more lawsuits, the Association of Officials and Lawyers for Animal Rights argued that the ape had sufficient cognitive functions and should not be treated as an object. The court agreed Sandra, born into captivity in Germany before being transferred to Argentina two decades ago, deserved the basic rights of a non-human person. According to the Daily La Nación newspaper, uh, quoting lawyer Paul Borompadre as saying, quote, this opens the way not only for other great apes, but also for other sentient beings which are unfairly and arbitrarily deprived of their liberty in zoos, circuses, water parks, and scientific laboratories. Orangutan is a word from the Malay and Indonesian languages that means forest man. Sanders' case is not the first time activists have sought to use the habeas corpus writ to secure the release of wild animals from captivity. In fact, as we talked about recently on this very program, a U.S. court earlier this month, tossed out a similar bid for the freedom of Tommy the chimpanzee, privately owned in New York State, ruling the chimp was not a person entitled to the rights and protections afforded by habeas corpus. So there you have two different courts in two different uh, ju- you know, political ju- jurisdictions ruling completely differently. Andrew, your thoughts? Wow, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's incredible that they ha- they're willing to go to such an extent uh, to protect this orangutan. Considering that in America, you know, we got the NDAA, we don't have habeas corpus here. And so obviously this ring is, I mean, I'm looking, you know, that I'm a little jealous of his freedom. If he, you know, <laughs> if he does get it, <laughs> I mean, talk about the new land of liberty. You can be a, a monkey and you don't have to, you know, they'll, they'll actually follow habeas corpus. The, the uh, I would say on the other end, it's like, if they use, okay, so say this is, uh, you know, they're claiming it to be a, another sentient being. If they, if they, you know, if that's what they're saying, then they, they can claim that on down the line, uh, you know, the next animal that they decide. And then, and then usually when they say, oh, we're going to protect this person, this, this right, that's what they always think that, you know, the state always has, has to do. Then they're just going to decide that uh, they're going to make a bunch of laws about. Oh wait, no, you can't. Uh, um, you know, you can't eat this animal and that animal because they have. You know, you're you're uh, violating habeas corpus. Right. Well, and what? Uh, so yeah, there's a very dangerous kind of slippery slope here. Yeah, what the U.S. would do, what the U.S. justice system would do with the idea that orangutans and other animals could be sentient is just use that sentiment against human beings in the court. So they would just use that to go after people that they didn't like. Well, also the <laughs> idea that uh, different animals would then have rights that they don't currently have. Uh, you know, at What would be the determining factor? Obviously, you can do things with a chimpanzee or an orangutan that you can't with other animals. Uh, they're more intelligent, clearly, and they can speak, for instance. You know, they can pick words from a screen. They can uh, use sign language. And so, you know, what will be the requirement to show that something is a non-human person by these legal jurisdictions? Uh, would it be that the thing recognizes itself in a mirror? Because that's one of the what's that's one of the hallmarks of an animal that is more intelligent than other animals is that it can know that it's looking at itself in a mirror as opposed to just thinking it's another animal or and or not noticing at all mm-hmm. what uh, whatever it is that's that's in the mirror. Uh, so Andrew, yeah, I think you're right about this. Any other thoughts you want to share? Oh, no, that's, that's it. Are you guys going to go to – you said you're going to Anar- Anarcho Poco? I am not. Mark Edge, who is uh, normally with us on weeknights here, is going to Anarcho Poco. What is he trying to make – uh, didn't he have uh, golf, golf or something like that? Did that fall through? 
Yeah, well, that was uh, Jeff Berwick, who is also doing an Archipulco. He was involved with the Galt's Gulch. That did fall through, and I don't have all the details on what went wrong with that. Uh, from what I understand, the blame has been laid at the feet of the business partner in that organization, and the claim I've heard is that the people who lost money will somehow be made whole, but honestly, I have not followed that closely. So if you learn more about right. it, and you, if you learn more about it and you'd like to share with us, you're certainly welcome to call in about it. Awesome. Right on. Thank Thanks, guys. Andrew. Appreciate the call tonight. Toll free number is 855 450 free. So, should, you know, which court is right in this case? Or are they both wrong about these chimpanzees and orangutans? Uh, you know, one court says this orangutan is a non human person, but a U.S. court says this chimpanzee is not a person, not entitled to rights and protections as afforded by habeas corpus which by the way habeas corpus is basically a joke anyway even when we're talking about human animals uh it doesn't work very well at you know preserving anyone's rights that i've seen uh, by the way more to the story here from yahoo news in 2011 the animal rights group people for ethical treatment of animals filed a lawsuit against a marine park operator SeaWorld, alleging five wild captured orca whales were treated like slaves San Diego court dismissed the case. The Buenos Aires Zoo has 10 working days to seek an appeal. Spokesman for the zoo declined to comment to Reuters. Their head of biology told La Nación that orangutans were, by nature, calm, solitary animals, which come together only to mate and care for their young. They said, uh, quote, When you don't know the biology of a species, to unjustifiably claim it suffers abuse, is stressed, or depressed, is to make one of man's most common mistakes, which is to humanize animal behavior. Hmm. So the zoo obviously, you know, believes that the zoo is an appropriate place for this animal. What do you think, Johnny Ray? I mean, do you think the uh, animal here, the the orangutan should be kept in a cage at a zoo even if the cage is fairly large, even if it's not a cage, even if it's just a sort of an area that's a place where they can run around. Have you ever been to like bush gardens or whatever? They don't have sort of the standard zoo cage that you see in the comic strips or whatever. They they have large swaths of area for the animals to kind of exist in. I think I've been to the Miami Zoo, which was a big big open um, environment like you described. How does that make you feel? Um, I, I wasn't thinking about it then, but now I guess I would. I am against the zoos. My thoughts about animals are evolving as we speak, and with the, the proliferation on the internet of animal videos and the sharing on social media has actually changing my mind about I want to hear more about that, how your mind is being changed about animals. You said you're against zoos. 855-450 free. Your thoughts are welcome as well. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA four herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. HerbalHealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here to bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. One court says that a orangutan is a non-human person, has the right to human freedom. Another court says that a chimpanzee is not a person, does not have those rights. These two courts are in different countries, uh, one in the United States, that's the second one, and then the original one is in Argentina, the one that decided that uh, the orangutan does have the right to human freedom. And the orangutan apparently will be removed from the zoo in which it is being kept, and will be delivered to what is called a sanctuary. Now, what the difference is between a sanctuary and a zoo, I'm not really sure. I don't know what defines a sanctuary, because a lot of zoos have you know, fairly large areas where, wherein these animals are, are living on a not truly free basis, but certainly not as bad as a sort of a metal cage at the circus kind of basis. Uh, arguably those zoos where the animals are able to to kind of romp about and do whatever they would naturally do in a relatively small area, I think are more humane towards those animals than, say, a cage at a circus. Um, but Johnny Ray, you said you've been changing how you view animal captivity and the idea of animal rights. I want to hear more about that. I also want to hear from you. You're welcome to share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. That is you, the listener. 855-450-3733. And join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. So, Johnny Ray, when you say that you, your mind has changed on this, what was your mindset previously and what has influenced the change in which direction? Basically, that animals were so much stupider than people, and because animals didn't have souls, then mm. it was, you know, while it might be distasteful to do things to them, whatever you did to them was okay and was civilized. And now a lot of the, the old arguments uh, I just don't buy anymore. And I, it's not really something I think about a lot. I am now because that's what we're talking about on Free Talk Live, mm -hmm. but I eat a couple of McDoubles every day. Every day? Yes. <laughs> I eat a couple of McDoubles every day. I eat a lot of McChicken, of uh, McChickens and um, uh, uh, Nuggets. Okay. Yeah, you know, I spend a lot of time at McDonald's. I see that. <laughs> but 
But what what was I talking about before? Uh, well, the, the changing the Im- and, and images and videos that you see on Facebook. Yeah. Of animals like um, um, dolphins, I saw one. A dolphin was was ba- babysitting a child, hmm. uh, to- tossing a ball back and forth with a child, and the animals seem uh, a lot more human to me now than they did before. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. Now I've all, I've read that agri- that agriculture, uh, raising plants, actually kills more animals than than raising animals for meat does because pesticides hmm. and and so forth are just killing all you know mice by the thousands and anybody who wants to eat your corn um i think i i'm i'm looking forward to lab grown meat and you know i want i want uh, some stem cell research to just create meat for me without it having to be attached so, to a, to a living breathing animal so just grow a chicken breast or something exactly. like that where there's no actual chicken yeah i think that's an interesting uh, technology and one worth looking into and i also share with you johnny ray i mean i don't know if i was ever tr- you know callous or anything towards animals when i was younger i don't I think remember that I was. you on free talk live describing uh, talking about uh, your cat ravage yep. and saying if ravage was 20 times the size he is now he wouldn't uh, think much of too much he wouldn't think twice about eating you he would be happy to do it <laughs> and so because of that you you would true. not afford ravage the rights that you would another person i, I don't think that uh, animals have the same kind of i, I don't think the animals have rights like people have rights rights and rights is just an idea that people have come up with so i don't think that rights actually exist in any sort of fashion uh, beyond in our minds and if it could be determined that an animal could grasp the concept of rights Mm -hmm. and not only grasp the concept but agree to the concept Mm -hmm. uh, then i think that animal should have rights absolutely that doesn't mean that i think animals should be abused or treated poorly uh, and, th- and that doesn't mean that I think poorly toward animals. In fact, I think animals are a lot smarter than people give them credit for, especially animals that are commonly thought of as not so bright, like, you know, common house cats and dogs. I think that uh, they can you know, really have a lot of intelligence if they're raised in the right family. You know, if obviously you're, if the dog is raised uh, by someone who beats it and starves it, uh, it's probably not going to appear as an at- intelligent animal because it's going to constantly be starving and angry. Uh, but uh, if it's raised in a family that appreciates it and treats it nicely and trains it and, you know, educates it, and uh, then I think you'll see how really uh, brilliant and intelligent an animal can be. So I think that, I think like young people uh, and kids, I think a lot of people underestimate their capacity for intellect and i think that's definitely true of animals Uh, Mm -hmm. i've I've seen it in my life where you know i've been even though i even though i definitely attribute my animals my dog and my or or my cat my past right now i have a dog and when i attribute intelligence to it I, i believe that she's a very smart dog but even sometimes i'm surprised by how intelligent uh, that that she is. So I I give animals credit for being very intelligent, and sometimes I'm surprised by them as well. And then you know you get neat videos like on YouTube where the bird fashions uh, the tool. Have you seen that one where the bird's trying to get at something at like uh, I forget what kind of bird, but some sort of bird, a robin or something like that, is trying to get at a worm at the bottom of a jar, and it can't get its beak all the way down there, so it picks up a nearby wire or something like that fashions the wire into a hook and then proceeds to fish down into the jar to I love retrieve. It. right i mean you just see stuff like that and it really makes you think huh these there's more intelligence out there than we realize and of course whether the animal could uh, if the animal did understand the idea of rights or could understand the idea of rights communicating that idea is of course the difficulty right like mm-hmm. you know how do you communicate with a dolphin well there are people working on that uh, we've seen the uh, the chimpanzees and people communicating with them successfully through sign language or through punching words or symbols on a some sort of a computer screen. That's that happens. Um, obviously, you can communicate with a dog or a cat. You know, can be given commands and you know can learn how to interact with you on some level. So I think that as time goes on, we're going to learn a lot more about how intelligent animals are. But this idea that in that animals um, have the right to freedom is a da- it's a dangerous idea because I think that you know it threatens the idea of having a pet in the first place. If the animal has the right to freedom, then does that mean we have to release all dogs and cats from their captivity in our homes? 
I think a majority of dogs and cats would choose to stay with the families that they're with now. I think that's true. But does that mean that the dog or cat should be allowed to leave at any time? Like, I like to have my animals inside my house. I, you know, don't like the idea of my dog getting hit by a car. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm sorry, I love the animal and I like the relationship I have with it and taking care of it and all that. And I would not want it to come to that sort of an end, Mm -hmm. you know. And that's one of the most common things that happens to animals that are allowed to go outside is at some point somebody hits them with a car. (laughs) And they'll, if they're lucky, I think they die at that moment rather than end up living with, uh, you know, broken bones and, you know, living a horrible disfigurement kind of uh, situation. Yeah, I want to get a house out in the woods because I want to have animals, but I can't have an animal and keep them inside all the time. Mm. And and I want to get and and I want a cat. I want a dog who yep. can just run out in the woods and do whatever he wants. And I want a cat. And the cat would, when the cat brought home mice that it had killed, I would skin the mice and cook them and <laughs> share them with the cat. And I want that really? I would have the cat do train him to hunt for me. That's awfully nice of you to cook the mouse for the cat. Maybe the the cat would probably prefer that I didn't. So maybe, maybe. I would just give the cat his uh, his his share raw. So the problem, I mean, there's a big slippery slope here, as our last caller had suggested, and that is that if you grant rights to one animal or the right to freedom to one animal because it has shows some level of sentience, mm-hmm. then you're going to start granting that to other animals. And then at some point, you can't have any animal in any level of captivity whatsoever, or certain animals are not allowed to be held in captivity, no matter how humane that captivity might be, no matter how loving the family that is, let's say, taking care of uh, a dog or a cat uh, might be. These court decisions, this is the legal system. One decision leads to another, which leads to another, and before you know it, it may be that all families have to let their pets go. You know, that if you ca- if you have a pet in your home, that you are somehow violating its rights, and that you would be legally liable to who? I don't know. I guess the government. Well, yeah. the mayor would still have his menagerie. The mayor would have a tiger and a yeah, lion <laughs> and dogs and ferrets, but you would not be able to keep your animals. So I, you know, it's tough because I love the idea that animals should be as respected as we can possibly respect their intelligence. But at the same time, I I see this as a really dangerous slippery slope that could result in people having to let their pets out. And that would be a horrifying experience for children all around the world. Sure. 855, 450 free, not to mention everybody else who loves uh, their animals. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,176, silver around $15.65, and Bitcoin is trading around $335. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. This edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by eFoods Direct Storable Foods. With a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to get a 10% off listener discount. In the news, a Milwaukee police officer who was fired after he fatally shot a mentally ill man in April will not face criminal charges. That announcement Monday from the top prosecutor in Milwaukee County. He says Christopher Manny won't be charged because he shot Dontre Hamilton in self-defense. Hamilton's family says he suffered from schizophrenia and had recently stopped taking his medication. Police Chief Edward Flynn fired Manny in October, saying at that time that Manny correctly identified Hamilton as mentally ill, but ignored his training and department policy and treated him as a criminal by frisking him. Google has revealed the first functional prototype of its new self-driving car following the debut of the early mock-up this last May. The shape of the Google self-driving car hasn't changed that much over the past few months, but Google says the latest prototype now has all of the parts it needs to drive on the road. In Habitat.com, reports that Google plans to begin putting the self-driving car prototype through its paces on test tracks over the holidays, and then start testing it on public roads sometime next year. More than a fifth of educational psychologists say they know of preschool children who are being given medications such as Ritalin, even though the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence recommends psychological interventions should be tried first. According to The Guardian, the survey also found that it was an intolerance of difference, so children not conforming to the norm were increasingly being seen as having something wrong with them. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. North Korea is experiencing nationwide internet outages. Many are questioning if the problem is a result of a U.S. government cyber attack response to North Korea's alleged role in the hacking of Sony. Whether or not the occurrences are related is yet to be seen. Feed the need, no matter the law. That was the motto last weekend when Come and Take It Texas, Don'tComply.com, and North Texas Anonymous came together with 50 volunteers to feed over 200 homeless people in Dallas. They conducted their outreach wearing openly carried arms. Along with food, the groups gave out 30 bags of coats, shoes, blankets, and toiletries. The organizations decided to implement the Feed the Need program in response to the recent and repeated arrest of a 90-year-old man who was feeding the homeless in Florida. Hershey's Chocolate has partnered with 3D Systems to test a 3D chocolate candy printing exhibit that's now live at Hershey's Chocolate World in Hershey, Pennsylvania. After printing their own chocolate, visitors of the interactive exhibit will be encouraged to leave feedback via touchscreen that will help shape the final technology used by Hershey and 3D Systems. In other 3D printing news, NASA recently emailed the plans for a wrench to a 3D printer located on the International Space Station. The Liberty Bean is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. 
This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In addition to creating a Twitter account, Pope Benedict XVI plans to further connect with Christian youth by giving up on Catholicism. Quote, in order to really relate to modern teens, he needs to make religion a much smaller part of his busy life, just like they do. And it's already working. Tweets like, can someone go to church for me, LOL, hashtag sleeping in, have been retweeted over a million times by lazy Catholic teens, while tweets like, if God was real, how come there's so much murder, and I'm still Catholic, I just don't go to church or believe in Jesus have been especially successful with college students who are questioning the church's teaching. It's really cool to see that the Pope is as active on social media and as skeptical about God as I am. Look, he just tweeted, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's totally how I feel. Pope Benedict's aides say his next project involves reaching out to Muslims by sitting down with Islamic leaders and proclaiming his undying allegiance to Allah. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you take control toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. And wherever you are in the world, you can call us on Skype at username lrn.fm. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Johnny Ray. We're going to go right back into your phone calls here, our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. In case you're just tuning in, though, the story on the table at the moment. Now, you can bring up anything, but what we've been talking about is this orangutan in an Argentinian zoo that is now going to be set free, apparently, or put into a sanctuary as opposed to in the zoo. The court down there decided that the ape is a non-human person that has been unlawfully deprived of its freedom. And while I love animals, you know, I've got them myself in my own life, I think that the idea of naming them as persons with, you know, non-human persons with the same right to freedom as humans uh, could really lead to an undesirable situation where, for instance, people are going to have to let their pets out uh, from their house. And so, well, let's go to Sharon. She's in New Mexico listening to Kiva. Hello, Sharon. Uh, Hi. Actually, I didn't hear the first part of the story. The the first thing that I wanted to say was that when you were referring to your dog, Mm -hmm. every single time you refer to her, except once, I find out how she's a her, you called her it. And it might not sound like a big thing, But dogs are sentient beings. I mean, my dog even knows what I'm thinking before I even think it. (laughs) They feel things. And that you described her so many times as it, would you describe your child as it? Now, I know a child is not the same as a dog, but it kind of bothered me. So, Did you notice that, Johnny Ray? Was I doing that? I didn't notice it, but I believe that you did. Are you sure I wasn't just talking about animals in general, in a general sense? No, no. No, you weren't. And if you replay it, you'll hear it. That every and, and I, I thought, well, you know, he's not really doing it deliberately, you know, and it's not because you think the dog is in it, but you actually did that, and and it has a vibration to it. it it's just, um, it bothered me because I love dogs, and I don't consider them it. <laughs> I, I have four of them, and they yeah, that are... seems really unusual that I would do something like that. I mean, I'll I'll take your word for it, but Johnny Ray sitting right across from me, he didn't notice that. Uh, I know I was well, generally replay, talking replay about it. pets and replay keeping it. pets indoors, and if I were talking in general about pets, then I would describe it as a pet as an it without knowing the the animal's gender. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't that. It was actually your own dog that that you said it. Okay. So I I just and I I probably wasn't you know conscious that you were doing that. It just bothered me. <laughs> anyway. All right. um I do, I do a lot of I do a lot of dog rescue and I I work with dogs a lot and I um, I know what they're capable of and they're amazing beings. It's human beings that have the problem, not the dogs. <laughs> but anyway, um, the other thing is I didn't even realize about this the orangutan story until he just reiterated it. And why um, why extrapolate? You know, they let the orangutan go into a sanctuary. Sanctuaries are safe places. Mm-hmm. Generally, they have food, they have shelter, but the the animal has freedom. And um, there's no reason to extrapolate that just because they're going to take an animal who belongs in a in a more wild um, environment, 
that they're going to let dogs free all over the country. That's I personally think that's ridiculous. It would never happen. I Why? Mean, Why you do know, you think that? I mean, know, courts tend to use one court ruling to justify another court ruling. I mean, certainly I agree with you that dogs are amazing animals and that they are sentient uh, beings. I mean, they have feelings and uh, they, you know, they are very, very similar to us. The DNA difference is very minute. The dog uh, thing won't happen because it's too impractical. But you, the, the, they can't make the U.S. citizens deport all their dogs from their homes. Well, at this point, the court in the United States has not ruled that uh, animals are persons. It was one in Argentina. Uh, that did that. So it's not likely to happen here yet, Johnny Ray, but uh, I think that that's a, that is a legitimate concern because there would be some people who say that, sure, Ian, as much as you love your dog, uh, you know, the, the, you're going to have to let her out of the house because it's you're keeping her in captivity. Uh, that's, oh, that's, that's a wild extrapolation from that. I really, that would never Don't happen. Don't you think that you, you're keeping you a dog never, captive, you know, though? Aren't you, keep, aren't no. you keeping your animals captive? To some extent? I mean, if you're no, living my, in a city, my, for instance? Well, well, when you say to some extent, my dogs run around in the backyard. Mm -hmm. They get taken places all the time. They get freedom to run. The more freedom they get to run, and I don't mean without my supervision, but the more freedom in a park or whatever they get to run, the calmer they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the but that's, more, not, that's not true freedom, though. You're still keeping them captive. Right? I mean, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to. Would you say that about your children, that you're keeping them captive? Or your teenagers who get, get to go outside when they want and whatever? Well, the difference with your children is that time. eventually they can grow up to tell you, hey, mom, I'd like to go out now, and if you don't let me, then you're keeping me captive. You know, the child can specifically voice its desire to be free, and if the child is ready or the teenager you know, becomes ready to take on their own responsibilities in life, then they should be able to emancipate themselves as far as I'm concerned. The dog and the cat obviously can't do that because they can't communicate effectively in that way. Well, dogs are more domesticated animals. I mean, they originally, if you go back to the real etiology of the mm -hmm. whole thing, you know, they were in the wild, but, they, but not as dogs maybe as wolves or whatever their ancestry is, that they originally were, um, were created to become more domestic type of animals. And so we're not, we're not really talking about that, that they have the same um, environment to live in as a, wo a, wild, a wild wolf or, or a fox. Well, couldn't you, you make know, the same argument, wolf? though, for the factory farmed animals that are kept in horrifying conditions? I mean, that they've been raised in captivity, uh, very close captivity for many generations. And so isn't that essentially the same argument that they should, uh, you know, that should be able to continue? Well, I wouldn't call it captivity. I would call it in many instances torture. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a horror that's Well, that's just a, what I'm trying to point out here is I'm not, I'm not necessarily look, disagreeing. happening. Yeah, Sharon, right. I'm not necessarily disagreeing with what you're saying. I'm just pointing out that this is a slippery slope. Wherein uh, you yeah, may I, consider I you I, may consider t factory farming to be torture, but someone else who let's say they're more radical, uh, they may say that keeping an animal in a in a house is also uh, torture. You know that they should be free, that they should have the right to freedom, just like every other human. Well, in in a sense, that's true. That's all but I'm trying to say again, here. And, again, the, and the courts again, will again if you. Yeah. If you exaggerate, you know, there are people who are living in a, a one-room apartment in New York City, and they have a dog, and they may maybe take the dog out for half an hour a day for a walk. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's not right, either. Yeah. But to extrapolate, but to, to extrapolate to the extreme that everybody is going to have to let their dog. I'm out, not saying I that's going that. to happen necessarily, but it could, or that some people might have to let their dog out. What if, like you said, you don't like somebody keeping a dog in their apartment without giving it appropriate exercise? So you know, should the government get involved in that situation, force that dog to be released no, into know, the streets? Uh, okay, now now that we're talking, you know what the government should get involved in. Hopefully not and a I, damn thing, this, personally. This, but. This, this might, well, this might be a, a, um, a little off topic, but not exactly. There are 9 million, and that's an understatement, dogs killed in quote-unquote shelters in the United States of America. I know personally, because I've worked on this, 
in California, there's a couple of shelters. There were 40 dogs one morning last year. This is, and this is only one instance. This happens all the time. There were 40 dogs one day that were put to death before the shelter opened. The shelter knew that there were adopters coming that mm-hmm. day. People worked their bones off to, how many to of those, help I'm curious, money. Sharon, that's horrible, those stories. How many of those shelters are actually run by the governments, though? I imagine there's a number of states that are putting dogs oh, right. to death. Oh, right. No, no, yeah, I won't go into the whole thing because it'll, it'll make your audience really sick. Oh, I believe that it would. Really, it seems to really me that the, the, right, it seems to me that it's the government uh, shelters that are more likely to be violent towards animals or, you know, inhumane towards animals because they aren't following the same incentives that, say, the Humane Society is. A private shelter like the Humane Society has to get donators, people who support their efforts through volunteering and donating money in order for their efforts to continue, whereas the government, they can just continue on because they get tax dollars every single year involuntarily from people, and if they treat, if they mistreat the animals, it doesn't matter. They'll keep getting money from us because we're all under the threat of violence by well, them if we just, uh, you know, if we don't go along with the system. Thanks, well, Sharon, for your well, call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-453. That is, uh, allows you to get on the air here with us. You can share your thoughts on animal rights. Uh, what should the system be doing with them? It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. I would not. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You dial in toll free to share your thoughts. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We're talking about. The idea of animal rights, and yet another conversation is being had globally about the rights of an orangutan. This one is in an Argentine zoo that has been ruled to be a non-human person and should be let out. But apparently they're going to be putting it into a sanctuary instead of a zoo, and I guess I'm curious to know what the difference is between a sanctuary and a zoo. I guess at a sanctuary there probably aren't people parading by to watch uh, but it sounded like from our last caller that she believed that at, even at the sanctuary, there's still some level of, um, you know, feeding and caring going on for the animal. So is it still in captivity when it's in the sanctuary? And if so, shouldn't it also be free to leave the sanctuary? Uh, so you're welcome to share your thoughts on the idea of animals and rights. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, we've talked about In Freedom's Cause here on Free Talk Live as... A really unique piece of audio. In fact, it's audio theater, which really you don't hear very much these days. In fact, I don't remember the last time I listened to any audio theater before In Freedom's Cause. Probably maybe caught some on some obscure radio station uh, at some point. But uh, you don't really see audio theater very often. And this is outstanding audio theater. It is well produced. The voice acting is good. The, uh, the sound effects are great. And the score was originally created for this purpose, for In Freedom's Cause. What is it? It's one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in recorded history, the story of William Wallace. It's like Braveheart, only historically accurate. Now, during the, and I have listened to the entirety of In Freedom's Cause, when you're listening to it, you're hearing this historical story told by fictional characters. There are one or two fictional characters, from what I understand, who are sort of young people in the story, and essentially they tell you, you know, through their eyes or their. I guess not really through their eyes, but through their the rest of their themselves. You are hearing them regale you, and the, the characters that are surrounding them are uh, from real life. And that's how the story is told. And because it's audio theater, it's uh, like a movie played out on the screen of your mind. It's got some names you might recognize from uh, the acting world, like Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, Skandar Keynes of Chronicles of Narnia, and James Cosmo from Braveheart, as well as Game of Thrones. Children in your life will love... In Freedom's Cause. It's got a study guide, and you can go and learn more over at InFreedomsCause.com. There's a special offer just for Free Talk Live listeners. Use coupon code FTL to get the family four-pack at half off. That's InFreedomsCause.com, coupon code FTL. So, Johnny Ray, I went back during the break to listen to a previous segment where I was accused of referring to my dog as it. Yes. And I'd asked you when our last caller was on making those accusations uh, if you'd noticed that. And I found, I think I found the part that she was talking about. Huh. Uh, and what I was saying, um, I, I did use the term it, and I used, a, I used that term a couple few times in a row. And I can understand her confusion about it because right before I used the, the word it, I did reference my dog. But what I was, I think in my mind at least, what I was doing was I was actually talking about all of the animals that I've had, uh -huh. which has been a male cat and a female dog, and also I had a female cat at one time as well. But, you know, so I've had a mix of different types of uh, genders of animals. And so I think that when I was talking about it getting out, the animal getting out, using those sort of generic terms, I was, to myself at least, considering and thinking about all of the animals that I've had and how frustrating it would be to have all of them get out uh, and get hit by a car. Not that I was specifically referring to my dog, who is definitely a she, and I typically refer to her as such. So if it came off the wrong way, I'd like to apologize about that. 
certainly didn't mean to uh, confuse anybody into thinking that I somehow, you know, don't care about my dog. Yeah, you need to apologize to it, your dog. <laughs> It's right behind she you. She is right behind me at the moment. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So the orangutan being held in the zoo is, should be let out, according to one court. But a court in the United States has decided differently in a very, very similar case involving a chimpanzee. And I doubt anybody's going to make the argument that an orangutan is somehow more sentient than a ch chimpanzee and that that's the reason why the orangutan is allowed to get out, but the chimp is not. We're just talking about two completely different political jurisdictions, two completely different cases. It still remains to be seen whether or not the zoo in Argentina is going to appeal uh, the ruling to a higher court. So, you know, maybe this will be overturned. And I didn't mean to suggest that every animal is going to be let out of people's homes. But what I was pointing out was that each person has a different level of tolerance for what they consider to be acceptable as far as how someone takes care of an animal. And with our last caller, I think that was pretty clear. So what I was suggesting was that this is a slippery slope and that over time, one ruling that one animal needs to be let out of captivity could lead to further rulings to where our last caller said that she didn't think it was right for someone in an apartment, uh, you know, New York City or wherever, where you don't have a, a yard to let the animal roam. Uh, Johnny Ray, you said you don't want to own an animal. Until you have the ability to release let, it into the wild, right? To let it go, let it run out in the backyard. If you're living out in the woods and you've got 11 acres, and you're fairly far away from you know road frontage or whatever, then it's probably a pretty safe bet that you can let the dog out and uh, let the cat out and have them romp about and as long as they want to, right? Um, but you don't want to do that now. You're living in a more urban environment. You're living in a place where we have a yard. It's not a very large yard. It's not really fenced in in any meaningful way. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't really have the ability to get the dog as much exercise perhaps as you might like. And, you know, for you, that's that's an untenable position. For her, our caller, that was also an unacceptable position. She would not want to have an animal in that condition. And so, you know, maybe she's not the kind of person who would use the government to further her ends. But those people exist. Those people out there who believe they know what's best as far as how you take care of an animal. And those people would be willing to go to the government after a court ruling like this and say, well, you let this orangutan out. Why shouldn't you let this dog out? Why shouldn't you let any dogs out who are in captivity in this country? Okay, how about you only let the dogs out that are in urban environments? Because it's just not right to raise a dog in an urban environment, which is what our call, the argument our caller was making without the government side of things. She was just saying it was wrong to raise a dog in that situation. Well, a lot of people will take something they think is wrong, and then they'll go to the government, and they'll demand that a law be passed. Uh, to right that supposed wrong through the force of the state. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's possible something like that could happen. Yeah, and the the you, you don't you're not using your own resources when you're using the state to go after somebody else. So I would like to think that the animal rights activists would would start with the factory farms. You know, there was a time, like I said before, Ian, where I didn't pay any thought whatever to the welfare of animals that I was eating or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and people told me, you know, these chickens that you're worried about, they're pecking each other's eyes out. You, They're not worth your concern, but I've, I, I don't feel that way anymore, and I think that the factory farms are ripe for some reform. Sure. I like the way that Mark gets his meat. Um, but you wouldn't reform them through the violence of the state. Right. So I think the most evil is happening on these factory farms. And somebody who was had their own skin in the game would focus their efforts where it can do the most good. But when you're using the state, uh, it you doesn't really matter who you pick. You might go after your enemies because you don't like your enemies and they may simply be pet owners. Which is right, which is why I'm disturbed by this particular court decision. You're welcome to share your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What are the rights of animals?
I lost 18 pounds in just four days. Hi, I'm James Zetta. If you're like me, you've already tried and failed at many diet and weight loss plans. The 18 and 4 weight loss plan requires no exercising, no diet pills or additives, no laxatives, no meal replacements, and no diet drinks. The 18 and 4 program is crystal clear with a day-to-day, step-by-step, and meal-to-meal guide. If you're not satisfied with your results, I will give you my 30-day full money-back guarantee. Go to 18and4.com. That's the number 18, I-N, the number 4.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101 reasonsfilm.com 101 reasonsfilm.com You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can talk about the question about animal rights. I think it's a, you know, it's an important question. It's, one, it's a conversation that will be had again and again, especially as we learn more about the intellect, uh, the intelligence of our animal companions and the ones who are not our companions, the ones who are... You know, in zoos and in cages uh, all across the country that you know, they're more intelligent than I think a lot of people give them credit for. But does that mean that they can't be kept or that they shouldn't 
be kept. And I think it's uh, it's an important conversation. You're welcome to chime in with your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Also, don't forget you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, then get your shopping done with Free Talk Live through shop.freetalklive.com. We've got Amazon links there. There's Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, and Amazon US. You go into the right Amazon for you. And then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. So whatever it is you're buying, maybe something for your pet, uh, because they certainly have plenty of pet-related products there. Whatever you're getting, Free Talk Live will get a cut when you enter through shop.freetalklive.com. Again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. So, Johnny Ray, did, was there more on the animal captivity discussion where you wanted to chime in? I mean, am I a bad guy for having a dog in a situation in which you would not? Because you said you, you know, would only want to have a dog or a cat in a place where you were living out in the woods. You're not now. You are actually um, my neighbor mm-hmm. here in downtown Keene, and we're not in in the woods. We're not far from the woods, but we're not in the woods. And so, you know, you're, you're not willing to take that step. Does that mean that you think that I am treating my dog poorly? Mm, no, I can't say that. First of all, your dog is is a uh, fairly sedentary. Uh, Jasmine is a little older, so she doesn't require as much uh, running around as a younger dog might. She still needs exercise. She still needs exercise. And and truth be told, I haven't been giving her as much as I should because it's cold out there. (laughs) I think that Keene is a city you can raise, you can have a dog in and Mm -hmm. take them out. And I would prefer living out in the woods where I just let the dog run free. Sure. but I think you can take care of an animal here by taking the dog out yourself and sure, walking we go out the for dog. Walks. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't want to walk her without a leash in case she, you know, got kind of interested in some other thing like another animal or whatever, and then you know, jolts out into traffic. That would not be a good thing. Yeah, mostly what this this story makes me think of is just kind of how and it's an exciting time to be alive. I think that that there's real. Uh, this is going to sound ridiculous but more possibility and potential for a interspecies community Mm because i don't think i'm the only one who's who's giving animals a little more credit for right for their own humanity and i think that uh that down the road we will be able to communicate with animals and they'll be able so. they'll be able to to tell you whether or not they're they consider themselves to be captives or family members i know that in the case of uh i don't know if it was a chimpanzee or whatever it was but some sort of um, monkey like beast was being held in a, a center where they were attempting you know they were doing one of those communications things with it and at some point it turned against one of the people that it didn't like. I forget what the reason was. That the monkey had a reason that it wanted to get revenge on one of the humans in the facility, and it, uh-huh. and it did do that. Um, so clearly that monkey was not ready to respect the rights of that, that other individual. And I don't remember what the other individual did to deserve the revenge. It wasn't like violence against the animal. It was just something the animal didn't like. And so the, the monkey attacked in some way. And so it could speak about that. You know, it knew sounds like it an episode done. of Seinfeld. It knew what the monkey knew what it had done, um, but it wasn't sorry for it, from what I understand. So, you know, eventually we get to the point where animals are understanding of what rights are. I think that'd be an amazing thing. And even if they're not, even if they don't grasp that concept, um, then still, I'm I'm with you, Johnny Ray. I think that the idea of communicating with them on a more meaningful basis, rather than just giving a, an animal commands to actually have the animal be able to talk back. Uh, would be pretty neat, uh-huh. and I'm I'm excited by you know all that stuff that we've seen, and of course going on for years with uh, with chimps and things like that. Dolphins, uh, they're expanding their ability to communicate with dolphins as well. Dolphins are obviously it's probably a little more of a challenge to communicate with them, given that you know they're in the water and we're not. But uh, some of the early uh, experiments that I've seen videos on on that is, have been pretty fascinating. You know, dolphins of course are very very intelligent. Uh, species they have uh, just I was watching a uh, I think it was a BBC uh, one of their BBC documentaries about dolphins and their different kind of you know the way they hunt is different in different areas based on the you know the 
the type, the kind of ocean that they're in or the water that they're in, freshwater, etc. Um, and they showed that some of these dolphins are actually passing down knowledge from generation to generation. Uh, that you know, there's some really very human attributes that you wouldn't necessarily have known about these animals without the constant observation that has only really been possible as of late. This, uh, I think it was called Eye on the Pod. It was a documentary, like a two-hour-long documentary from by the BBC. And what they did was, it was really neat, was they had these cameras, underwater cameras that were disguised as though they were animals. So they had one of them that was, you know, looked like a turtle, and it kind of moved like a turtle. Uh -huh. And then they had another one that looked like a jellyfish or something like that. You know, they had a few different types. So some of them could go faster. They had one that looked like it was a, a baby dolphin. And, you know, so some of them were designed to where the cameras could go faster and kind of keep up with the dolphins when they were moving quickly, and others were just sort of floaty kind of cameras. But it was fascinating because what that documentary allowed for was to observe these animals in a more natural circumstance rather than having some scuba divers down there holding cameras you know humans change their behavior when they're on camera uh -huh. and sure enough animals you know some of them may also change their behavior if they know that well i don't know if they know what the cameras are but if they know other animals are around in this case humans they won't necessarily behave in the same way so it was interesting to to see the behaviors that were revealed by these sort of intimate cameras that were very, very nearby the dolphins, but not disturbing their uh, their sort of natural habitat. I highly recommend that uh, that documentary. That's one of those things that I think it was Eye on the Pod is what it was called, and it was, I think, released within the last year, so it wouldn't be too hard to go out there and find. But that's one of those documentaries that should be an eye-opener for some people. Like, wow, you know, like really impressive things that you learn about uh, dolphins out of that one. And it makes you wonder, you know, what is it that we don't know about them and whatever their society might be, which they definitely do have something like that. Brings me back to my childhood. My, my mom was a member of the National Geographic Society, and I remember every time a new issue came in, I loved to look at the National Geographic, and I always went, I always looked for the stories about the animals or the insects. I love insects, Ian. Really? Yes. That's pretty unusual. I guess so. What do you so. love about them? I... Uh, because they're so, I don't know, humble and sort of weak. Humble. I don't know if you can call an insect humble. No, you're right. It's a terrible, uh, <laughs> terrible word to describe them. But they just, uh, insects seem, uh, they're just fascinating. They're alien. You know, mm -hmm. that's part of the appeal. They're so different and so primal. Right. Because, I mean, do they even have Primitive. brains? They don't, right? Like insects, they don't have brains, do they? And they're just kind of like things that do like they're they follow instinct essentially. Well, they don't right? have like a noodle, but uh, they've got they've got something, some kind of some some they've kind of cognitive nerve bundle some kind of or nervous something. System. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And uh um, What's your favorite insect? Ants. Really? Uh-huh. The ones that bite or just any old ant? Uh, Cuz there's the black ants and the red ants. I I don't like the ones that bite. I prefer Did the you, peace the more peaceful ants. Now you grew up in North Carolina. Did you have red ants there? We had red ants, but we didn't have uh fire ants. Aren't that those aren't the same thing? I'm pretty sure they're different. I think fire ants are what you've got in Texas that are coming up through We Mexico. sure as hell had them in Florida. The red ants would be the ones that would bite you. Uh -huh. And it was my understanding that, that was what a fire ant was, that the fire ants are red ants. I did not know that there were red ants that were not fire ants that did not bite. I'd be interested to, to find that out. But I, up here, that's one of the nice things about New Hampshire is they don't have fire ants in New Hampshire. No, they don't, yeah. do they? Uh, and really, don't see many, many roaches up here either. Have you seen many roaches in New Hampshire? No, I don't think so. Maybe inside some houses, but I haven't seen I haven't really seen it. All right, 855-450 free. You take control here. Cutting the cord. People are calling it quits on cable television. It's Free Talk Live. Cabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. 
Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Jeff Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Cold and flu season. <coughs> but don't worry. HerbalHealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products. Cold and flu fighters like beta-glucans, olive leaf antiviral capsules, grapefruit seed extract, HHA 4-herb capsules, elderberry power, and respirate. And don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. HerbalHealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. You dial toll-free here. You get on in the remaining moments, which are right now. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, but we do have enough time for you if you dial in at 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. And uh, if you like Free Talk Live, then you should become an amplifier. The AMP program stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. You go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up there with any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard right there uh, through amp.freetalklive.com. That 5 bucks a month that it costs to become an amplifier is money that we can invest into Free Talk Live. Get on more radio stations around the country, bring more internet listeners on all around the world, expand our satellite footprint. This is one of the most important things you can do for Free Talk Live, besides sharing the show online and with your friends wherever you can. Uh, getting behind the AMP program is a big deal for us. So thank you for doing it. If you're one of the people who is doing it, 
And uh, if you've yet to sign up, please go ahead and take a moment out. you got some time during the holidays. Just drop by amp.freetalklive.com to get signed up. That's amp.freetalklive.com. And you get perks, the amp-only call-in lines, amp-only Facebook group, and more. Amp.freetalklive.com. Johnny Ray, a couple of corrections to make. One, uh, I was wrong about the name of the documentary that I was talking about, about the dolphins. I said it was Eye on the Pod. No, the title is Dolphins Spy in the Pod. So look for that. Okay. And uh, I know it was available on Torrent a few months ago. It may still be. It was very, very good. And Johnny Ray, you have a correction about the uh, fire ant confusion that we were having. Yes. Uh, well, I according to the internet, there are fire ants in North Carolina, although it said 71 out of 100 counties and rarely, but... But yes, they do exist in the western part of the state, too. Now, I'm from the western part of the state. I don't remember. I remember there being red ants, but I don't remember ever getting, quote, stung by an ant or ever mm. having a, you know, a, a, a red bump raised from from contact with with red ants. And I don't remember these red ants being more aggressive than any of the other ants. So if there's a kind of a red ant that is not a fire ant, I think maybe that's what I saw in Asheville but um, but but actually, it's still inconclusive, Ian. Hmm. I'll okay. leave it at that. Yeah, I have to say, I'm unsure at this point about you know whether an ant can be red and not be a fire ant. So if you know more, you're welcome to correct us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're just talk show hosts. What the hell do we know? 855 Did you ever see that episode of MacGyver uh, where— <sighs> probably I probably would not remember whatever you describe. <laughs> it took place in took place in South America and lots of people were eaten to the were skinned to the bone by ants in Whoa. this episode. No, I've definitely not well, I mean I, I can't say I've definitely not seen it, but uh, MacGyver, I was pretty young when MacGyver was was on television. That was what, the late eighties? Yeah. Yeah. First MacGyver killed them with fire and then he killed and 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 it was a somber tone, but it didn't work, and then he killed them with water and then everybody was happy. Whatever happened to MacGyver, anyway? Uh, well, he was on that uh, sci-fi show about uh, Stargate, the, right? Yeah, yeah, right. My bro- my oldest brother, big fan of that. I never watched it. I always liked Richard Dean Anderson. Though. I, I love those Canadians. I uh, I never watched the Stargate show as a um, as a young person. But I did watch one just for the hell of it within the last couple of years, and boy, was it cheesy. <laughs> it was fun, but I don't know if I would, you know, I didn't continue watching uh, any more in the series. The movie was great, though. I, I'm a big, I did enjoy the movie when it came out. I used to have that one on Laserdisc. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. Hey, speaking of entertainment options, a lot of people are cutting the cord, Johnny Ray. The story here from USA Today, pay TV customers, most of them who've cut the cord, as it is called, are happy that they have parted ways with their cable company. Ian, uh, can I interrupt you for yes, a second? Sir. Richard Dean Anderson, who played MacGyver, is American. He's not Canadian. Mm. He liked hockey. I guess that's why I said he was Canadian. The character or the actor? Oh geez, the, the, the MacGyver <laughs> character liked hockey, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm going to assume that Richard Dean Anderson did as well because they filmed him playing it. So the finding of a new survey of cord cutters from management consulting firm CG42 found that nearly eight out of ten of the cord cutters, 77 percent of them, have no intention of returning to cable and are happy they dropped their pay TV subscription based on the 556 cord cutters the firm surveyed last month. Those surveyed were past customers of the five major cable companies. Uh, We found it very interesting that more than three out of four cord cutters were happy with their decision to leave cable entertainment behind. It's an early indicator of the manifestation of the problems and frustrations that people are having with their cable companies. I've never had it, Johnny Ray. I've never had cable television since I lived in my parents' house. Uh So probably you know, since I was, uh, I think I left my parents' house when I was 20. And so, yeah, so on my entire, pretty much my entire adult life, I've not had cable television. And I don't really feel like I'm missing anything. What's your history been with that? Well, we grew up with with ABC and CBS. We never had NBC. Would you and, have rabbit ears? Yes. Okay. And then one year, one Christmas, we got a Nintendo Entertainment System. Mm. We got a PC computer. Uh, and we got cable television. So I guess 88, maybe, thereabouts, we got cable. And then we had that until I left the house and uh, joined the Marine Corps, and I got the Armed Forces Network for a while. 
And then after that, um, no, I don't, I don't think I ever had cable again. Yeah, so, I mean, if you want to tell your story about uh, why you left the cable world, you should do that. What are people replacing it with, though? According YouTube. According to, to the survey, uh, most cord cutters are still getting internet service from their provider, 70% of them. So, for instance, here uh, we've got Time Warner Cable at the studio, but I don't have TV from Time Warner Cable. They're just providing me internet. Uh, most popular service to replace the cable company is Netflix, used by 73% of the survey respondents, followed by Hulu Plus at 59%, and Amazon Prime with 44%. Very few of them, only 3%, say they're getting most of their content for free. Cord cutters are not averse to paying for the content, he said. It's that they're averse to paying for content they don't need or watch. They want the things that they want. So, on average, cable companies lost 811 $811 in annual revenue from each cord cutter, the survey found. Comcast and Time Warner reported third quarter losses of 81000 and 184000 pay TV subscribers respectively. So it sounds like they are hemorrhaging subscribers at these cable companies, and people have legitimate complaints over the years. You know, who, why should you have to pay for this huge package of channels of which you probably only watch four or five? It just doesn't make sense. And will the cable companies get their act together and start offering a la carte programming to people to where they can buy what they actually want to watch in an effort to try to stay alive? Because it sounds like they're having a tougher and tougher time. Not as tough a time as the newspapers, for instance, but they certainly are. Aaron is with us in Philadelphia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Yeah, I was I was a cord cutter a few years ago, but I found that the last couple of times, the uh, service, they were throwing in basic cables for the same price. I think it's like so that you surf through and you see things you want to watch and like you can't get it because you don't have the free year subscription. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other thing I really called about was uh, I wanted to catch Johnny Ray's game of the week if he's going to have, if he has one in mind. Oh yes, and, I uh, do. I do. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of like, it's sort of my game of the year. Uh, Hearthstone, I always go back to Hearthstone and it never disappoints me. It's a free experience. It it's it's or it's a free to play game. Mm. It's a premium experience and um they just th this month released a the biggest expansion they have yet. Uh several months ago I was talking about Naxxramas, Curse of Naxxramas, which added about 30 cards to the to the game and this month, Gnomes versus Goblins came out, and that's about 120 cards. Naxxramas changed the the meta. You know, the meta is when you're when you're climbing the ranked ladder, which I which I try to do once a month, get as high up the ladder as I can. The mm -hmm. highest I've gotten is to about uh, uh, rank 15. That doesn't mean that uh, means you're 15 in the world. No, I'm sorry. That just means you're. That's just a number that you're given, and 15 is sort of is, is, 15, is a lower number higher. Uh, yeah, a lower Meaning number, number is higher. Would be the best. Yeah, lower number is higher. If you get up, fi uh, collect your thoughts, Johnny Ray. 75 percent of the players never get past 15. Let's, so I'm. Let's do a game of the year edition of Johnny Ray's game of the week next week. Johnny. All right, yeah. Let's do that then. Aaron, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Daniel is with us in Sun City, California. Hey, Daniel. Hey. Um, I had to call because you mentioned um, what is now called the American Forces Network. Uh, that's okay. who I work for, and that's one reason I cut the cable, because I get enough TV at work yeah. that I would like to apologize for. I feel like running a crawl at the bottom of the screen <laughs> saying, don't believe this propaganda. <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh, I would have loved to have talked uh, to you I, further about uh, where you work, but we're unfortunately at the very end of the show, Daniel. Are you happy with your cord-cutting experience, I take it, then? I am so happy. I've cut the cord two years ago, and uh, I listen uh, mostly to Wi-Fi radio, like listening to your show. Very cool. Well, call us again another night. And call earlier say, and talk to us about one. your experience working for the military propaganda arm. We'd love to hear from you then, but we're out of time for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow for the live Christmas Eve edition of Free Talk Live.
Free talk. Free talk Live. In order for this government to be legitimate, it had to have been legitimate in the first place. And that means that every person who was involved, who was on the North American continent at the time, had to have agreed to it. And if it was set up by force, if it was set up at the point of a bayonet, then it wouldn't be legitimate. It wouldn't well, be any more legitimate than me sticking a knife in your ribs and saying, give me your wallet. Oh, you gave me the wallet. It's legitimate. So uh, the very fact that this government was set up by force, it was set up by killing other people, mm. means that it's not legitimate. That doesn't even go into the fact that everyone who set it up is long dead. It's been assumed to be this real thing, this valid thing, because of the magic scroll. They wrote a magic <laughs> scroll. You know, they got out a piece of paper and wrote it down and voila, and now mm. it's a real thing that has legitimacy, right? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,176, silver around $15.65, and Bitcoin is trading around $335. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by Express Coin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. This edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by eFoods Direct Storable Foods. With a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat to get a 10% off listener discount. In the news, a Milwaukee police officer who was fired after he fatally shot a mentally ill man in April will not face criminal charges. That announcement Monday from the top prosecutor in Milwaukee County. He says Christopher Manny won't be charged because he shot Dontre Hamilton in self-defense. Hamilton's family says he suffered from schizophrenia and had recently stopped taking his medication. Police Chief Edward Flynn fired Manny in October, saying at that time that Manny correctly identified Hamilton as mentally ill, but ignored his training and department policy and treated him as a criminal by frisking him. Google has revealed the first functional prototype of its new self-driving car following the debut of the early mock-up this last May. The shape of the Google self-driving car hasn't changed that much over the past few months, but Google says the latest prototype now has all of the parts it needs to drive on the road. And Habitat.com reports that Google plans to begin putting the self-driving car prototype through its paces on test tracks over the holidays, and then start testing it on public roads sometime next year. More than a fifth of educational psychologists say they know of preschool children who are being given medications such as Ritalin, even though the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence recommends psychological interventions should be tried first. According to The Guardian, the survey also found that it was an intolerance of difference, so children not conforming to the norm were increasingly being seen as having something wrong with them. The Liberty Bee, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. 
To find out more, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, December 23rd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. North Korea is experiencing nationwide internet outages. Many are questioning if the problem is a result of a U.S. government cyber attack response to North Korea's alleged role in the hacking of Sony. Whether or not the occurrences are related is yet to be seen. Feed the need, no matter the law. That was the motto last weekend when Come and Take It Texas, DontComply.com, and North Texas Anonymous came together with 50 volunteers to feed over 200 homeless people in Dallas. They conducted their outreach wearing openly carried arms. Along with food, the groups gave out 30 bags of coats, shoes, blankets, and toiletries. The organizations decided to implement the Feed the Need program in response to the recent and repeated arrest of a 90-year-old man who was feeding the homeless in Florida. Hershey's Chocolate has partnered with 3D Systems to test a 3 chocolate candy printing exhibit. It's now live at Hershey's Chocolate World in Hershey, Pennsylvania. After printing 